This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one-of-a-kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. Behind Rabbit Hole's award-winning spirits is the story of their founder, Kaveh Zamanian. This cat left a successful 20-plus year career as a psychologist, went down the rabbit hole to make some great, delicious sauce, and he just got uh, inducted into the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame, so congratulations. What I love about these guys, honestly, I've been drinking them for a little bit now, um, it is uh, an affordable price point for the quality that you're getting. Um, they are producing under 15 barrels. It is small batch. Not like a lot of people say it's small batch. This is actually small batch. And a lot of people say they, you know, they have toasted toasted barrels for special rest recipes. But every single one of Rabbit Hole's whiskeys are aged in both charred and toasted barrels. So come at us, baby. Uh, this stuff's great. Cave Hill uh, is their original. Uh, then uh, High Gold is the high rye uh, double malt bourbon. And then this Boxer Grill, which I love, a sour mash rye. Like I've said, some people say they're not a rye guy. Uh, but you must try this because this, this has uh, such a gel- delicious rye grain flavoring to it. Um, citrusy and almost a little bit of floral. But the undertones, a little bit of black tea in there. Very smooth and soft on the palette. If you are a uh, whiskey drinker, you'll love this. And, of course, the stuff that I think does probably uh, some of the best for them is their Derringer. Uh, that stuff is uh, that sherry finished bourbon in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. You got to try this stuff. Uh, it's available near you. Go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now and use the promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Again, that's rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Use the promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Please drink responsibly. What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey Dunn say, it's John Stamos. What a handsome Greek god. Uh, he is, uh, he's out touring around talking about his brand new book, if you would have told me, brand new memoir. Uh, it's incredible. We tell some stories from the book itself and so much other juicy goodness in there uh, for John Stamos. Congratulations on the book. Very successful. Uh, when we did this, I think it was number four uh, on that bestseller list. So go pick it up or listen to it if you want to hear a sweet, sweet voice. Also, I'm on tour for a couple of more dates. This year, uh, me and uh, Bubby Lee were doing stand-up and bits from Bad Friends. Go to badfriendspod.com. We're in Milwaukee, uh, Chicago, Minneapolis, then Madison. Then we do a bunch of new dates in the new year, uh, like Atlantic City, uh, Tucson, Sacramento, Reno. We're all over the place. Go to badfriendspod.com for those tickets. Badfriendspod.com. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. You've said that. It is a beautiful, wonderful, intelligent, sweet, smart, composed, great head of hair, John Stamos. (laughs) Now, we got you two different bottles of water. You can choose whichever one you want. Can Uh, I say I'm a a big fan of yours? Nah, come on. Don't Uh, do it. Let me me just, that's what I do. Okay. I compliment first. Well, then wait till I compliment you because I finally read a book. You did? That was your first book. (laughs) That was my whole (laughs) book. Listen, after To Kill a Mockingbird, I hadn't read a book till I read your book. Kind of the same. It's pretty, there's a lot of similarities. So I I was flipping around Netflix about, (laughs) excuse me, a year ago. I got something from Macomb. What's yeah. What is it? Macomb, Macomb, Macomb. But by the way, with Macomb. With yeah. the, that's even funnier. Yeah, well, Macomb. I'm not going to call him by his right name. Tell me something, honestly, real Go quick ahead. before you move on to the Netflix thing. Because uh, you do have what a head of hair. Take yeah. off your hat real fast. But now, that's he, a, we had an argument yesterday. He's got good hair, but beautiful. pull it back. He's worried he's going to go bald because his he dad might. is bald. What he do we might. think? Yeah, he's going to. Yeah. Yeah, he I knew I it. Know, I but, told you yesterday. But now's the t- <laughs> how old are you, McCarn? 24. Got to get it done. Yeah, get get, we told him to get it done. You can go to Turkey or somewhere now. I oh hear. yeah, uh, just get it done. We said we're going to create a fund, but you, if you do it early on, you're not going to go bald. You look great, and you would probably be a handsome bald guy anyway. So <clears throat> I'm flipping around. I want to get to the Beach Boy special, special in a second. And, the, and my wife and I love watching comedy, and I'm obsessed with stand up. Yeah, stand up comedy. I know that. And you, and well, and so I'm, and I said, this guy's first of all, he's too good look. Like you were, you get these arms, and you walk out there, my arms out, yeah. and you were, you have this great face. You're too handsome to be funny. And then you, and then you started off with something. I was like, oh, okay. Then you get into your dad having COVID. Then you, that, that vibrator up your, uh-huh, then your uh-huh. friend's ass. It was a doctor. Yeah. And we're crying, laughing so hard. I, I couldn't believe how smart. I mean, you just didn't, I hadn't seen you before. Great. And, um, 
And I was just really blown away. You were really, really fucking funny. And then I just started checking you out on stuff. And did Giannis, is he the one that got us on here? Yanni, yeah. Yanni has been on the show a few times. I've been friends with him for a long time. He's one of my old, old buddies. Isn't and he a great guy? Oh, he, we should call him if you want. because I just got. I would love to. And he says so many good things about you. And I said, yeah, I said, like, get Stamos to me and I'll decide. That's what I here said. Here I am. I said, you get him here and I'll decide. And he did link it up. But your, your depth of uh, comedy in terms of being linked to the world is similar to a lot of guys. Uh... Kind of like how Mayer is too, where like mm. people wouldn't maybe know that you're a massive comedy fan unless they knew your relationships with people in comedy. You know, and Saget being one of your old best friends. Were you buddies. friends with Bob? No, you know what's so funny is I met him, but I, I would never, a lot of guys say that they know people, but they don't know him. <laughs> if you could, if you die on this show, it'll be great <clears throat> for the numbers. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, I, I might have something. No, you I'm have fine. something? No, 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 no. I, well, I was, but I just got off this book tour and I met about 20,000. I shook hands with about 20,000. Yeah, you're sick people no I'm so not then saying. i'll take it back i'm out. just happy to be a no nominated. i didn't know bob right um and i a lot of people do that thing when the, when a celebrity especially if a celebrity passes where they go we were so close yeah and they didn't know him so i would never pretend but i met him and was always a, a very nice cordial dude but mm. i didn't know much about him i think you guys would have got along great It'd be, well i enjoyed him from a distance yeah he you know? was uh you know he was one of a kind which which is hard to be these yeah. days so fucking smart so funny it took me years you know we didn't like each other at first um, on the show? On the show, yeah, when we started. You said you read the book. Uh, yeah, what show uh, was it? Full House. Doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. But no, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't like each other at first. I didn't like, and I would never admit to him that he was so brilliantly funny. He was, but he had, you know, he had comic Tourette's. Like, he, he was addicted to laughs. Yeah. Uh, and some of you guys aren't. I, I see that you're cool if, it's, if you laugh. It, but he had to have it. And he wasn't getting it on the show. Because it just took him a while to figure out what made that character funny. So he was just, all he cared about was the crew making them laugh, right. which was fine, but very distracting yeah, yeah, to yeah. me. And it, his process was d different than mine. So it took a little while. So how, uh, like, uh, how long did you find, when did you finally admit that you kind of liked the guy <laughs> to yourself? Oh, well, I, to myself, I always said, I always knew that he was brilliant uh, yeah. comic. <clears throat> he, he, he was so fast. When did you kind of realize that you were like, was there a moment where you're like, you know what, I actually do like this guy. Why am I doing, because I know yes. uh, as a small time actress myself, I've mm -hmm. done a few things. And, I know, you're on Dave. Well, yeah, and then sometimes you go, I don't know if I like that person. We right. don't really click or mesh. And then right. you give it some time and you go, I'm wrong, man. And I think that happens a lot because there's two really like big personalities yes. and you're also burgeoning stars. That show was making you guys stars. So everyone's mm -hmm. kind of rising in these weird ways and it's, I don't know. I bet that, 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 that hinders your openness to being like, I bet you this guy is actually okay. Yeah, you're right. It did take a while. And, you know, he, I, I, this, I did a show with Jack Klugman before mm -hmm. called You Again. He played my dad. Do you know who Jack Klugman yeah. is? Yeah. And he was, you know, he's a brilliant man. And, but we would dissect every scene and why am I saying this? And why would I cross here? And let's work on this. And then on Tuesdays or whatever, they had a punch-up night and he would have Gary Marshall, Harvey Miller, Jerry Belts, and these these titans of yeah. kings of comedy. Goliath. And, ja and Jack would make me sit in the corner and say, just sit over there, don't say anything, but watch out. And, and I'd watch these guys uh, work a scene and reconstruct a scene and find the, the, the heart of a scene. Jack would always say, where's the love scene? Because we'd yell at each other the whole time, like the odd couple. Right. Where's the love scene? And we'd put something nice. Uh, so I came from that. Bob came from, here's my cock, here's my dick. And I, <laughs> you know, he would be like, you know, I hate my, he would take a fork in the middle of a <laughs> rehearsal or if the audience was there on, at the beautiful Full House iconic kitchen table and, and take a fork and stab him, pretend to stab himself, say, I hate my cock, and you know, try to stab his penis. He would do... Uh, <laughs> Were the producers ever scared of this? The, what about the mothers or the kids? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they would get, he would get a talking to once in a while. And, so, and Dave too, they were pretty... But, you know, uh, so that didn't really go with my process. Yeah. But eventually, you know, maybe season three or four, I can't remember, but Bob's sister got scleroderma. And Bob spent his whole life uh, raising money for a cure to that. I don't know if you have done any of those comedy things. And then, um, and then Dave's sister got cancer. And then they found a brain tumor in my sister, my sister's head. And Bob's sister died, and and Dave's sister died. Luckily, my sister was misdiagnosed with um, um, uh, MS, so hmm. she did okay. But that's when we bonded. We weren't just three guys on a show. We were three brothers, you know, grieving their sis our sisters, and we put our differences aside and, and started to learn from each other, I think. Yeah, that's, a, that's the best part of growing. Do you think, and I have to say this, go ahead. right there, do you think Full House gave all your sisters the disease? Do you think it was because of Full House? I think it had if something to do it with it. we're going to blame it on it, something. Because I know they watched it a lot. <laughs> and I know, 
<laughs> Did you watch that? Oh, you're 40. I bet you. I'm 40, and I and Full House was a definite feature of my uh, sister's kid. Well, I, my sister is 10 years younger than me, nine years younger than me. Mm -hmm. But it was a feature of something I saw all the time. It was, I mean, it was in the zeitgeist of America. It was something. It was embedded into the culture of America. It was something you avoided. No, it's not true. I would watch right. a couple episodes. Right. I, uh, you know what? What really was to me was um, a nightlight. Had a big time crush on uh, someone on the show. Can you mm, guess who? Me. No, no chance. You're uh, not my type. Uh, you, well, you're showing your asshole to, to Giannis, which mm -hmm. we need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. because it, it disturbed me. Who do you think uh, I had a crush on on the show? Lori. Kimmy Gibbler, dude. No shit. Kimmy Gibbler. You're a weirdo. You know what it was? Yeah, she was like off and goofy yeah, and yeah. strange. And I liked that she kind of, she had like some darkness to her. She wasn't That's tied up. funny. Something was so off about her that it was like I was into it. Were you? Or is that your bag? Like you're into like weird. Yeah, shit weirdos. Look at this fucking idiot. I keep no, a bunch of bozos around them, here. Yes, I do, dude. Well, never mind. That's how you get employed over here at Whiskey Ginger Studios. Is your dad still around? I got two of them. Yeah, gay. I got two of them. Yeah, they're both gay. That's funny. yeah. Well, one of them just found out because he was married to my dad and he found out he was gay by marrying my father. That's when he knew. That's when he really found it's out. Like if I'm not gay, I'm blowing guys for no reason. That's right. He like, took what the test. What am I doing? And they both came back gay. Oh. I took is there, it, by the way. Is there a 23 and me? It, kind of it's, it's, well, what do you spit into? It's, it's, all, it's, it's just called me and me. Yeah, it's called right, me and me. Right, right. No, it's I got, not, my, my dads are alive. My dad, both my, my biological is, father and my stepfather. <clears throat> and I like to rub that in on people that have lost Wait, their are father. They gay, but, but do you have a gay, two parent, gay parents? No. No, no sadly, I'm sorry. Mind. I'm leaving. I know. That was such a good, but you, so, but you came from a broken uh, world. Broken... Yeah. I'm Irish Catholic uh, yeah, and Italian. Issues. My, my parents got divorced when I was one, before I was one years old. Wow. And I saw some was it because, wild Was it your shit. fault? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Look at him. I hate you. I hate <laughs> you too. <laughs> that was it, huh? I think it was, um, I don't want to raise this thing. It's right. a creature. Right. It's red. Right. And I don't like it. Who had the red hair? My mother's mother was a, was a, uh, Lucy? a little Irish lady. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you imagine? It's a Lucille Ball. Yeah. My, my, my mother was Catholic uh, Irish too. Um, but so you're a Greek you god. Guys, you're, so the you're, full house, you're not Irish. My dad was was a Greek. Yeah, I know. But you're you don't look like us, dude. You come to my land, we kick you right out. Yeah, Too pretty. Like, get him out. Get out of here, dude. Where did you? Where did? When did you start being funny? Like when did you know you were funny? Uh, I think uh, when when people made fun of me as a kid, right? I went to the I went to school in Chicago when I was a kid, and I was a single mother, and I was insecure about a lot of stuff, and then. You know, I would go on the playground and people would say stuff about, you know, Opie Taylor. Uh -huh. They would that was a big one for people that don't know that. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that was Andy Griffith, uh -huh. and or like you know, Howdy Doody. Uh -huh. uh, the black dudes always love that shit. Like, here, yo, here go Howdy Doody in this motherfucker. <laughs> Look at Howdy Doody walking down the hallway. Hey, Howdy! Yeah. And they would, you know, they'd fuck with you. And then as soon as I learned to fuck with them back. And people laughed right. because I thought all these thoughts that were quicker than what people were making fun of me for. You're fast. And I just didn't say them because I was scared it was going to get in trouble or something. Mm -hmm. And I think I probably started saying them, you know, around fourth grade, fifth, fourth, third, fourth, fifth grade. Yeah. And you'd snap back. And then it, everyone laughed at mine. And then I just realized, I was like, oh shit, I should, all these weirdo thoughts I have, I should utilize them. them. Yeah. For for you guys to and you're a great one at that. Bert, I just did his thing a couple yeah. weeks ago. He's so funny. To he, stand, you guys just get up on the stage and tell these stories and make them so fucking funny. And that's what I I, I just love. We try. By the way, well, I wanted to tell you this. This 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 reminded me. The first time I saw Bob uh -huh. at the factory, I want to say I think I was at the factory, okay. and it was my first move to L.A. And all I knew of Bob Saget was Bob Saget from what I'd for seen sure. in on TV. I I didn't really know he was a stand up when I was younger. Mm. And then he starts off with a bit about um the Fucking olsen twins the no f the olsen twins one of them blowing him while one of them is like putting stuff in his butt yeah and they were trying to see if it could go all the way through his butt and she could taste it from the front wow. and i was like holy Whoa. shit i mean it was like a shock wave yeah. i had no idea i was like is this i mean i think i asked somebody i was like is this, is this what he does i had no idea did you ever see the aristocrats yeah of course yeah 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 were you in that no no You're too young no um I want to go back to, I brought, uh, you probably got to be a fan of Rickles, right? I mean, huge. And yeah. we could talk about him. He, he was like a second father to me. But I finally got, so Howard Stern, you know, have you been on Howard? No, I've only yeah. done the, uh, you know, After the, the yeah. wrap-up show. Yeah, yeah. they okay. won't put me on the real we'll one. We'll get yet. you on the real yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, one day, one of these days. I just did it last, I mean, I've known him a long time. And um, anyway, so I brought, so he always told me that Rickles, he said, you don't know Rickles. And I said, well, I kind of do, you know. And um, he said that Rickles was his number one influence. Why, why he got into comedy, and he, him and his mother used to watch Rickles on the on the on the you know Tonight Show or whatever it is. So I finally got Rickles to come in, but I but we I didn't tell anybody. 
So I, I said to, uh, I, I came in, I said, hey, guys, I, I just kind of showed up when they were doing the news. I said, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I got this new girlfriend and I want you guys to, I want your approval. Let me know if you, what you think of her. And I said, come on in. And Rickles walks in and they hit the, they couldn't fucking believe. Already, amazing. you know, almost stopped doing heroin just to, <laughs> to straighten up for a second. And um, uh, they both, it was a beautiful, you should watch it it's on YouTube. They both connected on being, you know, like you said, like being picked on at school and they had to be funny. Yeah. And Don told this, the whole story about that. And then, and Howard stood up, he called him Mr. Rickles, took his glasses off. It was really a special moment. And um, uh, Howard said, you know, the same thing happened to me when I was a kid. He said, oh, really? Yeah, you look like a, a Jew Zulu, he called him. <laughs> Where does that come from, a Jew Zulu? Uh, so I get that. I was picked on too. I didn't, um, it didn't make me funnier. I got a black eye from a guy. Asshole. I know. I read that in your book that you see you got you got socked out. Was that the only time you ever got knocked out or punched? I think so. But I've but but there's been so many years of people wanting to kill me. Yeah. Like there was always someone that's even to this day. I think there's uh, him. McCrum, McCrum. Yeah. But the only reason that but not, but back then it was just because people were mean and kids are assholes. Now it's because you're you're you. Now you're that's beautiful why and successful. That's why they wanted to beat me up. Yeah, man. The hotter and cooler you're on the and the more successful you are, the more people want to punch you. The guys. Seem, there, there was a chapter that I cut out of the book where I talked about uh, Mickey Rourke. There was for years he wanted to, I had a death threat on Full House. I talked about that a little bit, but I, it didn't make the book. And then Mickey Rourke. Give me the death threat. What are you talking about? Yeah, I, can, I can't get just grazed by, by that, huh? Yeah, that's insane. I had a death threat, but so Mickey Rourke, no, that's a huge, oh. but it, I'm sure, I'm sure you've had your, a litany of stalkers as time has gone on. Yes? Well, yeah, but we didn't really, you know, you didn't know about him because there wasn't the, the internet, internet and everything, so. There was a guy who showed up on, on uh, we were shooting at, on a Sony lot and he showed up across the street at the, at another lot, but the dummy thought uh, we were there shooting for. And he, and he said to somebody, he said, do you know where John Stamos is? And the woman was like, uh, no, and uh, why? He said, because I want to kill him. I said, oh, uh, I don't know where he is, the lady. And then she ran to the security and they, ch they didn't get him. Then he was started to call the ABC, the hotline or whatever it is and say, I'm going to kill Stamos. So it got intense, <clears throat> and I remember going into the room, the producers, they said, uh, you know, uh, so everything's okay, but, the, you know, somebody want to kill you. I'm like, how's that everybody okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry about <laughs> it. the security guy, that, and they had this FBI guy, you know, live with me practically for like two weeks, two, three weeks, um, and he took me to a, a, a place and bought a gun and everything. It was a real trip. So he was staying um, at your house? Yeah, in my what? house. What? And I kept trying to ditch him like an idiot and stuff. They turned out the guy was just a jealous idiot or something. And it went, it went away. Although Sagan had a funny thing. We... Before the show, we would do this sort of huddle. and We would just make up, we would go, and break. And then usually Kouye would say, you know, don't ever poop in your shoe or something like that. And um, <laughs> then there was, someone's going to kill John. Uh, Can I have your parking spot, John, when you right. die? Or something Bob said. <laughs> uh, Mickey Rourke wanted to kill me because, so I was dating this girl, and then we, we broke up, and I was, in, I was at the China Club in New York with uh, Ken Schreiner from General Hospital. and. And funny enough, um, Ray Liotta was there. And it was before Goodfellas, I think. It, and Ken and Ray were on a soap together. And um, so he joins us. We're sitting there, and the, the girl, this Mickey Rourke comes in with this girl that I was dating. And, and she goes by, and then she comes back out. and, and the, Hey, it's Terry. Hey, hi, hi. How you doing? I'm great, great. And, and uh, oh, it's great to see you. Like, Look at that. Dating a you know, big time. He, it was in his prime, too, man. Yeah. And uh, I said, oh, okay. She goes to the restroom, and then Ken goes, uh, I'm like, Mickey Rourke's married, man. What's he doing with that girl? I said, oh, I don't, I don't know. It seems like he comes back out. Okay. Oh, one, one more thing. What, what are you doing with a married guy? Like, to my, I told this girl, <laughs> like an idiot. And Ken's, like, kicking me on the table. Oh, I don't know. He's separate, whatever. She goes back, and then we're carrying it on, and all of a sudden, they have this rumbling. In the, they were in the VIP room. We were at the bar. <laughs> and the manager of the place comes, in, yeah, you got to leave. I go, why? Mickey Rourke wants to kill you. What do you mean, Mickey Rourke? What, what, what did I do? I'm not, I'm not leaving. No, I, I would leave, John. I'm not leaving. I'm going to sit here, and if he wants to talk this, what did I do? I didn't know. She went back and said what I said to her. Mm -hmm. um, and then Kin says, well, I know him. And so he goes, and he comes back to me, he goes, he just broke a bottle, and he wants to slash your face <laughs> open. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and for 10 years, it was, no matter where I went, he, somehow he was at these restaurants and things. It's like, Mickey Rourke, he's here. You better leave. I'm like, I'm not. So that went on for a while. I don't, uh, I, I never really You never buried the hatchet with the guy, huh? No. He could still want to kill you. I know. I don't want him to. I yeah, I don't do want him to either. Oh. Good God.
But guys are now, now it's, they're different. But we're all over the place. You were talking about. No, I like being all over the place. Oh, that's, my, that's my favorite. Uh, bullying. I had this guy. It was right when I realized that girls, st- I was a goofy, dorky kid. Yeah, I, you say that in the book, but I, I, do, how much I of it that is. Pictures. I, I see the photos. My mom covered my face when she brought me home from the hospital because I was so ugly. No. She told the neighbors we got a pet monkey. <laughs> she didn't do that, but she did cover. I'm funnier than you. We got the San, we went to the San Diego Zoo. We picked this thing this up. This thing up, yeah. We and this is Johnny. Home. So you said you were picked on because what? You, you, the big nose thing was the thing you yeah, said? Yeah, but I was also, I was into puppets and magic and, you know, things that aren't, girls don't really like. And did I was you take the gay stunts. test? Uh, what is the gay test? You failed just, uh, just by saying that. That's a big no, fail. No, 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 no. Eh, eh, we got one. What do you mean? No. You didn't You were a big Disney guy too, right? I'd say gay adjacent. Gay adjacent, right next door. Yeah. yeah. You were, no, I'm not. No, I've done a lot of theater though too. So yeah, well, so you people. said it, not me. No, but you, so. No, anyway. no, but you, you, you were I big. I started to become, I think the, 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 the butterfly, right? Out of the caterpillar thing, but I didn't know it. And this, this kid that I knew said, uh, so-and-so wants to go, she thinks you're really cute and wants to go out with you. Don't tell anybody because I told everybody. Yeah. And um, I was at this block party uh, and I was at the dorky house and, and I told everyone and then it got down to the pool house and there was a uh, football player who was her boyfriend. He came and bam, popped me right in the eye, black eye. Yeah. Did you ever get in fight? You probably are a fighter, right? Yeah, oh my God. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. He, he's I, sad. We, no, we got, we got, we were just, I, th- fighting was kind of fun. Really? Didn't I mean, I didn't like it after some point. You yeah. know, when I got to college, I didn't like it anymore because it was always like bro bros, drunk guys, assholes. I went to Arizona State where yeah. people were begging to fist fight for no reason. What did you study there? What did I study you, there? You want to be a doctor? Journalism and uh, minor in English. Have you ever written a book? Or written? I, I told you, I finished yours. You said that I didn't sex say hurt. Read. You I said, said that you said that sex hurt. You didn't finish the bully did story. Did it? Did it? Did it hurt? I don't. Uh, yeah, I was like, this is what the world revolved. The first time, not not recently. But when you say that, I didn't get it. What do you mean, sex hurt? It just it hurt. The the it just was. Ask Johnny. You guys have had sex. What, what is he? <laughs> yeah. So this this fucking uh, this 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 on this thing. He Johnny says, "Are you are you uh, red all over?" And this guy gets stands up and sp- pulls his pants down and spreads his ass yeah, cheeks. Yeah, show him. And and at but why at the park? That was weird. Pe- people were picnicking around that. Every, yeah, I, pe- I hope their meals are done because they I have to watch. I can't get out of my. It's like the two girls in one cup or something. Like I can't get out now, of my. That was thing. a clip. You stood up and you spread your cheeks. Yeah, people that want to see, I spread my cheeks to Giannis on one of his episodes in uh, in New York, and that was re- that's how we bond. If you want it, I'll give it to you, no, babe. No, 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 no. But right. and, and then it was like, hey, it's smooth, isn't it? Pretty, yeah, it's beautiful. It is like nice. guys don't say that to each yes, other. Yes, they do. Guys who are secure with their masculinity do. Okay. Oh yeah. What Cronus? <laughs> Um, no, yeah, so, we got in fights. We did get in did some you? fights as a kid, but I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't fun. It was just kind of like a, uh, it was a thing that happened, right? Like in college, my, one of my mm-hmm. buddies, Colin, made me get into, we got into fights because those guys were always, uh, something was always on the rise. It was young, uh-huh. filled with cum, dumb college uh-huh. boys, drunk. Right. And yeah, as an adult, I don't want to get into a fight no. anymore. It hurts. But I had this black eye and I had to go to school and I was, there was no bully talk back then there was no counselors and it was so fucking humiliating and it i ne- i'll never forget i said i'm gonna be i, I looked oh he wrote in, in the mirror um i'm gonna kill you big nose and i was looking at it like oh my god i gotta do something i gotta do something drastic i'm gonna kill you big nose yeah i said i gotta become famous because this was my thinking i'm gonna become famous i'll have bodyguards and they'll beat them up and every level every every plateau that i hit at, at, in my career i go nah i'm gonna show this asshole uh-huh. get on tv I'm going to play with the Beach Boys. I'm going to invite him backstage and I'm going to beat him up during a drum solo and fuck him. Now, I've gotten over it over the years. Have you? Well, I do wish to see him again. You did play with the Beach Boys. I've done all that stuff. I mean, you yeah, manifested what, it. Yeah, I've, yeah. So you I really did really, say it. But I do want to see him again. If and Because I don't think he's going to read the book because I don't think he reads. But He's a big fan of the show. Is he? You want to say you hi to him? Say hi to him. You're saying yeah, right that'd there. be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he likes, he loves my show. I get an email. It's like, you had on the one guy that I loathe more than anyone in the world. I didn't have like a mortal enemy like that. I had, oh, gu- yeah. I had guys, I had people that I never wanted to see ever again. And did you like, when you started to become successful, was it like, fuck you guys, you know? No, no I never had any of that. that stuff. I, I never, I never, uh, the only, uh, uh, yeah, I told you, I wish mm-hmm. I could have said, mm-hmm. 
was um, there was a teacher who is now dead. There was a teacher who told my mother, um, she said, uh, it was the first time my mom ever defended me. And, I've, and it really did mean a lot to me because I was a rambunctious, wild kid. Did you have School siblings? Was tough. Sorry. She was nine years younger than me. My parents just had me and then my mom got oh, remarried. Said, okay. So I had nothing except for my little sister. God. Oh yeah, they divorced it. But we were so, you know, I graduated college before she got to high school. The gap was mm-hmm. massive. So I was, you know, I, she, when she was a baby, I, she was on like a little ventilator and I remember holding her. Mm. And it was like our gap was so big, we didn't really grow up together. But are you, you close? Know? Are you friends with her now? I love her now. Yeah, now we're good friends. Now, because she's a, an adult. You know what I mean? It's funny. It's like now yeah. we're friends because we she's grown up. But and you're, are you both your parents still alive? Yeah. Are they super proud of you? Kind of. What do they say? Like, what did your dad say when he said, "Why are you talking about the COVID?" No, no, no. He would say like, uh, uh, "You do impressions too." I want to talk about that. Yeah, my like my dad like to to comedy and anything I've ever done. He's like, I just, I'm glad you love it. <laughs> <laughs> but you make dough you're so successful yeah he does they don't care they just want they're like they just wanted me to go float and be happy but that was mm. the thing I knew that moment with this teacher this woman Mrs. Rose mm. I'll never forget she said to my mom Rhodes Rhodes she mm. said to my mother um, is Andrew on medication <laughs> and my mother said no why uh, and this is way before everyone got on f- what is, so. uh, whatever the fuck are that you is. in is this in what, what grade I right? was probably in I don't even know it, I want to say fifth grade, well, something insane. like that. Yeah, fourth or fifth grade. Okay. And uh, I just winked at Macron. Yeah, Macron. Just- don't do that. He'll get hard. And she said to my mother, is he on, ed- ed- uh, is he on medication? And my mom said, no. Right. Why? Off, and she yeah. goes, well, he really should be. Uh, because you were hyper? Yeah, yeah he's, I just, a school or a, a traditional school was mm-hmm. not good for me. It was bad. I couldn't do it. Were you too smart? Were you ahead of everybody? I was probably quicker than I applied myself. Right. You know, but then she said, he really should be on medication. My mom said, no, I don't think you need to tell me what my fucking son should be on. Yeah. And she goes, well, I don't enjoy having him in my class. My mom was like, I'm sure he doesn't enjoy being in your fucking class. (laughs) And then she grabbed my arm and she was like, let's go. And she was angry, but it also like proud of me in a weird way because she was like, you're an independent thinker. You're going to be this way your whole life. You're going to be different. Wow. Maybe it'll pay off, but. I'm not going to punish you for being unique, different. I was just different. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, it didn't work for me. Did you, what happened then? Did you go to another school or did you No, I mean, I, I, I just fucked off the rest. My mom just told me, she was like, just don't talk to her. Just oh, shut right, your right, mouth right. in her class and right. get by. Right. And, and cut it out because I don't want you to get kicked out of school because I got suspended all the time. Did you, were you, did you get great, really good grades and everything? I was just B's. I was all B's. Yeah, but, I, pr- but barely but an effort. I didn't do anything. I got yeah. B's. Yeah. I would get A's sometimes. I didn't even fucking show up. I didn't get, <laughs> I didn't get them teach, like, I didn't want to learn about cutting fraud. What, what was that going to do? What, nah, like, no interest. They said, well, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's to see how you learn. It's a tool to learn. I said, well, what, use the tool on th- shit I need, like dealing with women, you know, later <laughs> yeah, or yeah. a checkbook or whatever. Right. You know, they don't. Um, so you were that. Okay. But did you struggle in school? I didn't, str- I didn't try. I didn't, str- I was like me, you didn't I really barely do it. got through it. I cheated a lot. And then I, um, I, then they said this asshole, they called me Stanos. Come in here, Stanos. Why? I, my name is Stamos. I don't know. But Stanos? Is that an insult? No, I just didn't get my name right. I don't yeah. think if Stay Moist would have been better. Stay Moist is way better. Right. That's yeah. what Macron Stay Moist. Was. Hey, Stay Moist. And you would have been like, you got it, baby. Yeah, baby. Um, and so he, I wasn't going to graduate until I, I had like library books. They, they, they didn't like me. It's there. Um, but so and then I went to that, that little room. I, t- I could, well, I couldn't, you know, in college, you went to college, right? I did, barely. I went to Arizona State. So I yeah. went, is that a party school? It's, it's a, yeah. Yeah. It's not Harvard. No. It's not in the Ivy League. But you're in a, you're more of an intellect than, uh. I just never thought school was never going to be for me, right? So I right. thought, if how can I get to California? That was my whole secret. How do I get to, be to the on West TV Coast first? Or I just or wanted to do comedy. Or? All I wanted to do was comedy. Right. I didn't care how I did it. I was just itching to do comedy, and I actually didn't know at the time I wanted to do stand up. I just thought, can or, I get to California so I can do comedy? Did you do? Did you audition for TV shows and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, when I first moved out, no, man, I didn't know anybody. I had nothing. So all I did when I first moved out was, um, I tried background once. Did you really watch show? One time. No, no, no. It was a, uh, um, college humor was a website at the time. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. And I did a sketch with them. I think it was, uh, uh, like a David Cross wrote it or something, something like oh, really? that. I, re- I remember they baited us with a name and then we showed up that day. None of those people were there. Right, right, right. And it was just me in the background of a field in Malibu and I got sunburnt and I was like, I don't think I'll ever do this ever again. <laughs> right, right. But I thought college humor, it's a comedy sketch. It's yeah. da, 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 and fuck that. It was, you know, what Bob and I idea. did this great one called, uh, it was, um, the snuggle fest. I don't know if you ever saw it. Or, mm. And yeah, I was teaching him how to, to cuddle in bed. And it was my, my, uh, patented, uh, technique. Mm-hmm. It was for college humor. And he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. Cause he thought it was this game. 
and it and he then he loved it. It was it was really funny. You should check it out. Sometime. Snuggle fest. Yeah, you teaching him how to snuggle. Yeah. Are you a snuggler in real life? No. Well, my wife is. She wants to snuggle. You don't want it. I want to. Are you big spoon or little spoon? Well, you have to watch the video. I talk all about that. You do? Bob and I, yeah. Okay. You want to put it on now? Hi, I'm John Stamos, one of the most handsome men you could think of off the top of your head. Being a noted Lothario, people often ask me for sex advice. But guys, if you truly want to win over a woman, the real key is the cuddle. So as my gift to you, here are the techniques of my patented Stamos Snuggle Fest. Mm. You and your lady will probably want to start with a Stamos Soother. She lies next to you, her head resting on your chest. Not only will she feel protected, the pitter-patter of your heart will reassure her that you're still alive. From this position, she could kiss your neck, caress your gallant chest while you run your fingers through her raven hair. Now, don't be afraid to use your fingernails. A good Stamos scalper will leave her relaxed and tingling. Next, you'll want to move into the Stamos spoonful. It's a gentle way to show your lady what she has to look forward to later. Traditionally, the man plays the role of the big spoon. But folks, it's 2011, and even the most feminine woman can feel equally at home spooning her man. And be careful not to let your arms get trapped beneath your special gown. This is worse than death. Instead, your inside arm can go behind you or above her head, while your outside arm is free to rest on her firm yet tender belly. Hold her fragile hand, gently cup her perky breast, or, well, the rest is up to you. Advanced cuddlers may want to try the Stamos Swaddler. Nothing brings you closer to your lady. And if you sleep with your eyes open, the Stamos way, you get to stare at her face all night long. You can also caress her leg with your foot or allow your toes to intertwine doing an affectionate little soldier boy dance. Feel free to improvise. You can nuzzle noses, butterfly kiss, blow on or even gently nibble her ear. Perhaps the most important cuddle is the Stamos stutching her with your fingers, lightly running the tips or backs of your fingers along her tender curves. You're like a cartographer of the female form. Your exploring fingers are like Lewis and that other guy, mapping the peaks and valleys of her body's terrain, traversing her every womanly crevasse and claiming it for your own. With the right mix of affection and tenderness, my Snuggle Fest guarantees that your woman will stay most cozy. I guarantee it. That's right. Bob, what the fuck? In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by BetterHelp. I've talked pretty openly on this show about uh, depression, anxiety, uh, and why I think therapy is a wonderful thing that helps uh, millions and millions of people uh, get where they're going. Um, look, the winter is coming. Winter is coming. A lot of people uh, share the seasonal blues, get a little bit down and downtrodden during these no sun months. And uh, sometimes uh, it's a little bit heavier on your psyche than you think. Um, that vitamin D is essential. And I got to tell you, sometimes you let the holidays that are coming up and all that stuff kind of get to you. And therapy, I do believe, can be a bright spot uh, in your day to de-stress and help get some stuff off your chest. And the thing I think is the best part about BetterHelp is that it's done completely online. Uh, if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, why not BetterHelp? It's entirely done online, and it's convenient, flexible, fits to your schedule. You can do it from anywhere, wherever you are, as long as you're connected. Uh, you can do it. You fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. It is simple. It's wonderful, and I really do love it, and I believe in this kind of stuff. It is the future. Instead of going to in-person therapy, do it from the comfort and safety of your own home uh, where you feel like you can just be you and do your thing. Uh, find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash whiskey today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, better H-E-L-P dot com slash whiskey. Hey, hey. Turkey Day is a coming. Thanksgiving is here, and Ibotta is here to give you cash back and help make sure your Thanksgiving table is complete. Because who wants turkey without the gravy? I want the sauce. Uh, big uh, holidays means big family get-togethers. You don't have to spend all that money on Thanksgiving spread without getting something in return. With Ibotta, you can get your turkey and all of your favorite sides for free. Starting November 1st, uh, for the fourth year in a row, Ibotta is giving 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving feast. Just add the offers in the app to redeem for everything you need to make your Thanksgiving feast complete. All you have to do is shop at your favorite retailers and upload your receipt. 
It's that simple. It's so simple, it's ridiculous. They give you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. You can also earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, yes, Macy, yes, Sephora, yes, and Best Buy, and so many, many more. Look, you're spending a lot of money during the holidays on yourself or on friends, like we all do, and myself. I'm spending a little bit too much money on friends and family, uh, but why not get a little bit of cash back from Ibotta? It's that easy. All you have to do is download the Ibotta app now and use the code WHISKEY to get 100% cash back on your Thanksgiving dinner starting November 1st. It's happening right now. Let's go. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store, download the free Ibotta app, and use the code WHISKEY. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or App Store, and use that code WHISKEY. Ginger. I like gingers. That's college shoe. That's our college shoe. So wait. So what was your first success then? You auditioned for TV? Was it TV? I think was the first thing shows? I ever landed, I'd la- I got a pilot for ABC called Mixology that was uh, oh yeah that was about one night in a bar. The whole season was about one night in a bar. Who it was, was actually a great, great concept. Who else was in it? Nobody you know. I don't think. I, I mean, know. I don't think so. I don't think anybody you know. It was a bunch of young, uh, up and coming actors. Why wouldn't I know? Okay. Well, I mean, you. I mean, a, right. I, I, it, I mean, they're all kind of doing their own thing now. It was a pilot um, that didn't go. No, we got one season. Oh, you did? Yeah. And That's it was cool. really bad. I do. I think I who ran that show. Uh, it was uh, J- uh, John and Scott, the guys that actually wrote the first draft of The Hangover, which is kind oh, of fucking insane. Yeah, they wrote yeah. the original Hangover draft, and I think they wanted this to be like crazy and fun and uh-huh. weird. And ABC, ABC yeah, did. Wrong network, right? Yeah, it wasn't going to happen. So that went for a year. I do remember the mix that was a crush for a year. It was a little mm-hmm. smash, and then uh, after that, I did. Uh, well, I, I started my career doing punk I mean, I did the reprise of Prump Punk. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the first thing I ever did. And then, um, then the mixology, and then I did, uh, a show called I'm Dying Up Here on Showtime that was about stand-up comedy in the 70s that we got criticized to no end. Was that Jim Carrey? Yeah, Jim's show. Yeah, we were pre-Miss Maisel. We were pre-all that stuff. And Why did you get... Why did, yeah, why didn't that show work? I thought for sure. Hey, Showtime didn't really give a shit. I, yeah. I, I, I think they thought that it was going to be something else, and it was dark. Yeah, you know, I th- it was based on a book. It was based on the book. I'm dying up here, and yeah. I do think it was miscommunicated. They promoted it kind of like it was a comedy. It wasn't a comedy at no, all. It was, it was dark. a dark drama. And he was in it once in a while, right? <laughs> Jim just produced the shit out of it. Jim didn't uh, didn't thought, show any fun. Wasn't he in another show, like a comedy show? Like that? yeah, he did another one. He this one of the guys that wrote on I'm dying up here okay. actually wrote that show called Kidding. Which do you think anyone's still awake during this? No, episode? no chance. Yeah, um, there's no chance. Uh, you know Mike Binder? He's a good friend of mine. Of course I do, yeah. He did the comedy. Yeah, I know the bind. Uh, the he's doing, he does a bunch of benefit stuff, too. He, he's always helping out the community is the yes. best way I can say it. Well, he it. did that, the, com- the, the uh, comedy store. Yeah, the documentary doc. was great. Were you in that? Yeah, I did a little did piece you? up there upstairs. And they put me right before he interviewed Letterman, which I thought right. was cool. Yeah. A hero of mine. Like, that was oh, my yeah, guy. As guy. a kid, but, Letterman was... And you went on Conan for the... That's your first... Conan was my first stand-up uh, on TV set, and I thought that... I mean, because, uh-huh. you know, for my generation, Conan was, like, the guy. Yeah. Like, doing The Tonight Show was cool or whatever, yeah, but I Conan was the guy, man. man. Especially because he loved comics, and they right. promoted stand-up right, in a right, way right. that no other network did. Where Leno had stand-ups on, but you had to be really... You had to be Leno's flavor, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. Conan didn't give a shit. He just wanted you to be funny and didn't... He, they they wanted they wanted stand up from all kinds of walks to come right. and that was and that I was, was proud. And was that the was that the during the time when the shows could go longer or, or well we like had, I mean for us it was still a gun to the head you still had to do you know oh. you had to do your, your exact minutes? five minutes five minutes in what? fact if you go over they tell you they're like it's okay but also it'll get cut <laughs> right you know what did you what did you, what was your opening joke. Um, what could you do that was Warner it was on T and T T B S or something like that then. Wasn't it? TBS, yeah. yeah. I think it was Warner Brothers. Yeah, was, was that the, the Warner was lot? The lot? Yeah, yeah, the lot. And uh, what was my opening joke? My opening joke, uh, yeah, I sleep naked. Mm-hmm. I like to sleep naked. And? And I say, I like to sleep naked. And people always say, like, you know, well, what, you what can't happens? sleep naked at night. What happens if the fire, fire. house catches on fire? Yeah. Right, it's a common, but I said, where did that come from? And what era of time were so many houses just setting ablaze and people were outside naked? Like, <laughs> oh my God, what a mistake. Yeah. Tell everybody, don't sleep naked. They I'm a fool. Yeah. And I said, also, what kind of asshole of a neighbor would I have to have that would make fun of my penis while my house is on fire? <laughs> like, what a dick. Yeah. Like, what an opportunity to mock my cock. My house is on fire. Yeah. That was my opening Conan joke, I think. And yeah, I remember sure. when they booked me for it, I did that joke at the improv. Uh-huh. And then I followed up with this other joke about trying to uh, get a, a lady of the night on accident in Montreal when I was, you know, whatever. Uh, and it uh, immediately they, I, they said, you can do that on TV. And I said, well, is it, 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 it the prostitute joke? Is that? And they said, we, we don't give a shit. You what was it? Joke. 
Um, I say I was in Montreal, and that was yeah. when I first got Just for Laughs, and I was uh-huh. walking the streets, and I Howie said, is that Howie's thing? Just for Laughs? Yeah. No, no, Just Montreal. for Laughs. Old, old comedy festival. Been around for a long time. Not they Howie do Mandel's? No. It's his one in Montreal. He has that comedy festival. Well, I mean, he may be a part of it, right. but I don't. it's not his whole thing. I don't think it's his whole thing. Okay. It's been around for a long time. But he, um, but I said I was walking the streets, and I saw a sign that said, uh, uh, what I thought said, a lover. Uh-huh. But it's Elue, L A L O U E R. Yeah, it means for rent yeah. in French. Mm-hmm. For rent or to rent. So I called her thinking I was calling a prostitute. <laughs> for rent. And I said, How much? And she right. said, fifteen hundred. Mm. And I said, That's that's a, a lot Steve. of money. Yeah. And she said, I also, you know, want to remind you there's no pets. And I said, Lady, for fifteen hundred dollars, I'm gonna bring a pet. More petting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're bringing so a pet. It was a, yeah, I'm bringing a pet. So it was it was just a little Wait, you know a what's little so brilliant about tease. your thing was like um, about the finger in the ass, it, it, the little pinky that it went to the to couple fingers. Uh-huh. That was brilliant, man. Thank you. Yeah. I was just watching that again the last night, and we were laughing so hard. And I <clears throat> and I said to my wife, I said, he's going fist, and then you would go the fist. Mm-hmm. That was and that Saget's that was Saget's. Uh, yeah, he was too. that kind of way. I, I remember yeah. watching him. He he kind of had that. He liked a little bit of trickery, misdirection, but his yes. favorite thing was misdirection with a with a wink of shock but he would mm-hmm. smile when he would do it that's why yes. i think bob was so lovable to a lot of people in the comedy community because he always had a nice wink behind everything yeah. it was really sweet which is hard to do i think a lot right. of people think that's easy to do because anybody can be dirty right everybody right. can be dirty it's right. really easy everyone does it when you're young but to have that but to have a little bit okay. something behind it to make it to still be affable when you're being dirty it's a tough trick i could why well, i watched him and studied him I, I study all you guys because i love the the mathematics of it the timing of it the way you guys construct jokes and what words work what, what. Mm-hmm. and he was you know great at it and you'd see him on letterman and he would you know he would come out with like uh something about his daughter uh, uh no she's she's at home she's passed out because we she's drunk or something mm-hmm. and then and then and then letterman would say now bob you know the audience right <laughs> and then you'd see this flick do i you know did i go too far did i cross the line do i bail or do i go full fraud i was like no you're right we no we don't we don't get her drunk we chloroform her. Yeah, right. And you, know, you can see <laughs> you it. You back like, up and then you attack yeah, again. Exactly. Yeah. Rickles was, you know, the, the king. The best. Too. He's the best. the best at it. He was, um, we became friends. Uh, um, we were at dinner. And we were back to back seats and he didn't like who he was with and we just started jabbing each other. And it was during a time when he was not relevant. People thought he was dead. You mean you know? he had like a lull in his career? Yes. Yeah. People and, that don't uh, know, he did have that. It was a gap period. Yeah, to, from like he was 70 to 80 or something, you know. When, but it is like, weird how people floated away and then it was like, well, Rickles, then, and you're like, yeah, Rickles. Yeah, well, we did that documentary, um, Mr. Warmth, and mm-hmm. and with, um, and then everybody started doing these tributes to him, AFI, and and uh, the Friars Club. Bob and I did a great one with him. Um, so then he was big again. But but I just paid attention to him. I, yeah. First of all, I was just I would study him. He was the master, and I and and we we became very very close. Like he was like a second father, and we would talk on the phone once, you know, every couple of days, and. Like two schoolgirls. He really wanted, and I wedged, he didn't like comics. I wedged Bob in there. Uh-huh. And then he loved Bob. And I love that he didn't like comics. He didn't. And then That's Jeff so Ross, I had to really <laughs> cram in there. And then he ended up loving. Yeah, I don't know, because I think comics felt like they had to be funny around him. And that, yeah. you just can't do that. You know, you just have to roll with it. <clears throat> you could introduce, you could have introduced me because I don't really do that in front of, a right, lot of times people, right. like, I'll, I'll meet people and they'll go, oh, you, you have a stand up. Yeah. yeah. You, I don't really try to gun for the laugh when I meet people in the world unless it comes naturally with the rhythm of it right right but because it's a it's a little off-putting also it's just like not my character but i do know guys that are sure they would feel like yeah they just need to like shotgun it in there and he doesn't he wouldn't you know he's not like that he would he would mow them to guys some he beat the shit i'm not physically out of uh love it so one day we were in vegas that sounds that sounds about right yeah 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 and um uh who else did he uh hammer he he well jeff ross at my 50 i just started thinking my 50th birthday you just turned uh, 60 years old. Which is, it's I disgusting feel, to hear. No, but I'm so tired. I'm just. Uh, Are you really tired? Yeah, my, 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 I, I came home from this really successful book tour. And um, yesterday, uh, it was number four on the bestseller list. Like, number, not only is it number four on the bestseller list. Yeah. I mean, you should have opened it. Audio why, why am I having to tell Well, because we do that before we start taping the show. Oh, you're going to say it? Yeah. <laughs> we do a whole nice intro and give it really nice suite. I pre-tape it before okay, you even okay. come here. And I give you a lot of credit for a book that I told you. I haven't finished the book in many, many years. Yeah. Did last, you really finish it? Yeah, I did. The last, the last book I finished was uh, American Buffalo. I just got uh-huh. sent. Uh, do you know American Buffalo? Yeah. the, play, the, the... Yeah, I just reread that because uh, uh, our, our buddy Jake Johnson said I, I have to read it again. When was your, uh, wait, so that book, yes, it's, we could talk about it, but, uh, 
Um, I do. Well, a lot of the stories that we talk about now, we did. There, there is some of that in the book. And what I do want to make fun of you for a little bit, go ahead, because I want to know the depth of it. Please, you're you're a Southern California kid. Yeah, you had this fascination with Disney, and as a Chicago kid. Uh-huh. Disney didn't mean anything to us, but a place to go when you're a little, little kid. Right. But you grew up so near, and you talked about kind of your love of knots and all that stuff. Uh-huh. For people that don't know Knott's Berry Farm, another uh, another part of the uh, amusement park monolithic world uh-huh. of Orange County. Uh-huh. But Quick, do you still do you yeah. still have Disney stuff in your blood? Are you still a big, like, do you love the world of Disney still as an adult? Disney World. Have, did you go to Disney World ever? Disneyland, I mean. Yeah, Disney World. I only went to. <clears throat> yeah. I never went to Disney World Land until I moved here when I was. Oh, really? Twenty four, five years old. Let's go now. Let's go finish the podcast. I don't want to. So you're you're bitch. You're saying like it's an adults going to Disney. I never got it thing. when adults <clears throat> had this fascination with it. I only I I I did never. I could never wrap my head around it. But right. you do you still have the thing for it? I I don't have it as much, but my wife does. I she was does. kind of. I felt right before I met her. I was like, yeah, I think I've done enough with this Disney. You know, I, I've, I've done it. Um, but then she pulled me back. I was at dinner once with Rickles and, and uh, Kimmel, and Kimmel brought uh, Ryan Gosling. And just when I thought, like, that's so lame to be a Disney guy. He was like, I love Disney like you. And I go there, and I go there by myself. And I, have, and I said, oh, okay, yeah, oh, I'm a Disney guy. And then you got back into it. You were yeah, okay. If Gazi was into it, you're and into Gazi's it. If Gazi's in, I'm in. <clears throat> it's, um, you know, it's, it was a place to just, and I had a beautiful childhood, unlike yours. I would just, <laughs> it wasn't like I was hiding from anything. It was just that um, you are now though. That's, now I that's, that's now I want to go in there and just forget about my life. <laughs> no, it's a it's a, it was been a nice thing. Did you like um, like growing up like shooting people and stuff like yeah. gun fights and stuff? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Got a lot of gang fights. Did you ever go to Ravinia? I played there a lot. Yeah, that's the a Riv. Place. Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you played there with who? The Beach Boys. You played with the Beach Boys. Mm-hmm. I was there. We were there a couple uh, a couple years ago, and it was the Ringo and the Beach Boys or Double Bill. And that was pretty cool. Tell me this. Were you, f- right. when you got to become a part of the world of the Beach Boys, mm-hmm. because again, you kind of manifested it as a kid because you yeah. loved them so right. much. Yeah. Did Just it, like you manifested this. this right. Did it feel as satisfying to you when it happened? Are you kidding? Yeah. yeah. It's the greatest. But isn't that, isn't that great? What a great payoff because it worked. <sighs> what's your, what's your, yeah. I what mean, would I want to manifest like that? Who's your, besides having sex with me? Who, what, what, let's go to a, Please, he just winked at me. He just winked. No, I didn't. On camera? No, I didn't. You winked. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. uh, when you put this up, John, I want you to slow mo it. I'm not winking this at you, bud. This is relax. <laughs> who would like be I'm my being... ma- Who would be my manifestation like that? But not who. Well, I mean, what's your favorite band? Yeah, who's that on your shirt? This is the Feetles. This is the Beatles uh, spinoff. It's okay. a it's a foot fetish uh, band. The Feetles. <laughs> really? Uh, what what would be my like? Yeah. Okay. But music isn't my th- that music is your world, right? And you want to always play music. Well, so for me, it would be like um, it'd be like doing a it'd be like doing an um a tour mm-hmm. a stand up tour with like George you know, Carlin, Pryor, yeah, Carlin, right, like right. just being in the room with him. Right. I, obviously, I would never deserve it. I'm just saying, like that would be my. Yeah, Beach Boys is like fuck, man. If I could like be in the room on a massive tour of the guys of old, yeah, right. That because I've been with the presence guy, the the guys that are now big, you know, like Chappelle and those guys, and mm-hmm. I've been around them and been on been with them at shows. And do you do? But you, are you in the big big theaters now? In the I just we just do theaters, not that big. I don't do like arenas or field house. We do you like said we. It's just you. It's Why me, it but we lead? talk about it as the Royal. Well, I do them alone, and then me and Bobby lead tour them together. So right. I do probably 2,500 seaters up to 3,000. And That's me and Bob, huge, man. We do up to five together, five or six. Yeah, it's You big. don't need Bobby. I... No, we do need Bobby. I need Bobby. <laughs> I love him very much. Did you, I did. Uh, Giannis brought, well, Giannis was staying at my house, and he was, he was going to do the pod, his podcast. What is it called? The... Giannis, the, 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 uh, no, Bobby Lee's. Oh, Tiger. Tiger yeah. Yeah. We don't said, talk about that on this show. Oh, sorry. No. Can, I said, can we, can, it, can we tag along? And we went and I, when we just sat in with him and hung and out. Then, yeah. And Bobby was great. Giannis stays at your house guy. every time he comes to LA. Well, he usually stays with, um, um, uh, Whitney who I'm going to yeah. go see after you today. Can I stay at your house when I come to LA? But you live here, don't you? So you think, is this your house where we're at? Now? Yeah. This is where I live. Yeah. Is things, wife- things are not as good as they seem. You must make, we make a lot of dough now, huh? Not making that much. No. You are. You have not to like, be. Not like Stamos money. I don't make it anymore. When you, but Go let ahead. me tell you something. Let me ask you let's, something. Let's, let's be honest. Go ahead. When you did network TV, mm-hmm. that yeah, was, was when it was, was absurd. They had a fucking minting yeah. print, printing machine at ABC and they were like, come yeah. pick up your bag of cash. Yeah. You guys, you guys, but I wanted TV out. was different back then. TV was different. I wanted out after, I knew I only had a six year contract and I, I'd learned to love the show by that point, but I wanted out and, um. I knew I had him by the balls, so I, I, I wanted to ask for all this stuff. 
And, but the main thing was I said, I want a point or two of the show. That's That's huge. what I should have got. I didn't actually. You didn't get it. No. But this, I went, I went to uh, <laughs> You I went sold to it like you got it. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a schmuck bait, they call it. Yeah, here. Yeah. Here it is, right here. That, that was Rickles. Who, who, by the way, who did get the most uh, benefit out of that show? The girls, eh? Well, they, yeah, I don't, money-wise, I don't, they didn't, I don't think that, they didn't have a point, but um, they made a little bit, but then th they went on to, you know, they own. Uh, it's, York, it's amazing but, they managed to like never work ever again, but get, but become the most successful. Well, they worked hard on that, on their, their empire over their there. Brand. Their brand. clothing line, yeah. But I mean, they never worked incredible. on TV really ever again. They didn't want to. I tried so hard to get them back on, I came up with the idea to do Fuller House. Yeah. With, with, the, with Jeff Franklin. Huge hit, by the way. It was a, it was okay. I think people really love that. No, you should have seen the reviews. I went on Seth Meyers and just reviews? read the reviews. I know, it's fuck, fuck, Dude, fuck. Who gives a fuck about what the, I'm talking about the humans that watched it. Well, I got a lot of good reviews for the book, so I can't. There you go. It. No, I, the, the, you know, the first year, the first show, they, the first run of Full House, they got in, in let me finish the, the money story. So Les Moonves takes me to lunch and talks about all the stuff and we're going to do thing. And, and they gave me a lot of money and I could leave anytime I wanted. And they gave me a movie, a shitty movie. And, and we're walking back from the commissary and he, he puts his hand on my shoulder like this and kind of, it was like this and, and like that side of his shoulder and this part of his uh, elbow, what's that called? The forearm. Or, or forearm yeah. was up against my throat. Just, just enough. He goes, you know, well, you're going to get all that other stuff. But, uh, you're not going to get any points on this one. You know what? Well, maybe the next one, but you're not going to get any points. You're like fucking mafia shit, man. There is no next one. This is the one. Yeah, that was the one. But, that doesn't um, make sense. Every, people, people are lucky enough to get one huge hit like that. All the stars have to line up and magic has to happen. I, I finally realized that the, if you didn't get the show, fuck off. We didn't make it for you. And, 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 you know, in lieu of sophistication, you know, with these, you know, these critics talk about what made up for that, it wasn't sophisticated, but sweetness moved in and, and the brain moved to the side and it actually gave you room to feel something during a divisive time right now during it's, it's like a good home cooked meal, yeah. you know, the, of decency. Yeah. And that's, that's what you are. A home cooked uh, meal of decency. Yeah. With a couple of pieces of uncooked meat a, in there. A little dirtiness. There's here a little and there. bit of uncooked meat in there, it's and you're like going to get through it. Right. You're going to get through it. It's, it's, yeah, it's been sitting out for a day or two. The reason I said it is because it. the success of the show did lend itself to having some sort of callback, comeback, whatever. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think it was. Oh, a, Fuller House. I think yeah. it was a brilliant idea. I, I really do. I mean that Thank because uh, we tried to sell that show for a year. Nobody wanted it. Really? We went everywhere. And the last place was Netflix. I'm like, come on. And Netflix wasn't Netflix like it is today, but it was, it was on the rise. It was going to be. Yeah. And uh, I said, come on, man. I didn't even go to that pitch meeting. My mom was sick and she was dying. And um, she saw. Well, Thanks well, for bringing it up, Macomb. Well, she saw one Why of Why would you have to bring that up about his mom come dying? Come on, Macomb. That's insane. Why would you? He flashed it on the thing. Oh, oh my God, a photo of your mom. Mm -hmm. Macomb. Macomb. Sick head. Macomb You're sick. Good, You're sick up here. That's a good name for a TV show. Ah, uh, Macomb. Yeah. You Officer know. Macomb Off on the case. Do you do He's voices. always combing his head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do, a lo I, do, I do people that I've encountered in my life. I don't do, like, celebrity impressions. Right. Well, you do. Okay, you do your dad. You do who else? Like, I just know people that I've heard around the way. Give me like, if I question. hear you, I can mock you. Like, the, the, guy, the guy who used to do my uh, the restaurant by my old house in West Hollywood. <laughs> right. He used to do, he used to say, I'd go there and get breakfast every day because I yeah. get two eggs and coffee in the morning mm -hmm. back in my first apartment. What was his name? Uh, 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 no, uh, 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 no, 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 hold on. I do know. I know. Uh, Armando, Armando, Armando. And he would go, he'd go, hello, how are you? <laughs> and I'd say, good. And yeah. then I'd go, two eggs, coffee. And then he'd go, <laughs> fruit or potatoes. That's what he'd say every time you get fruit, <laughs> fruit or potatoes. Or potatoes. Or potatoes. <laughs> fruit or potatoes. He'd sing it. Yeah. So I would sing it on the way home. I'd go, fruit or potatoes, fruit or potatoes, fruit or... And it became... Yeah. So that, to me, I can imitate people I meet in the real world. I cannot do... I don't do like a... You know, someone's like, you want to hear my walk-in? I don't right, do those. Right, right. But I want to do someone I've seen or heard before. Right? So like... Uh, mm -hmm. like uh, um, you did some gay voices on your special. Yes. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's too good. No, it's got to be simple. Uh, I first, <laughs> listen, dude, I grew up around it. I grew up in a part of Chicago. All my mom's coworkers uh, were gay men and beautiful your, women. Where'd your mom work? She worked at a property management company uh, in the heart of the most affluent part of downtown Chicago. Got it. And we lived in these buildings because we could, my mom was a single mother, so she filed to get, you know, uh, mm -hmm. help. Right. And we could live in very fancy apartments, even wow. though we didn't belong. You could tell we didn't belong. When we left and I saw <laughs> the way that other people lived, I was like, oh, right, this oh, yeah. is... We don't have money, but we live in a place where people do have money. What streets? Where was it in there? We were down in what's called the Gold Coast of Chicago. Right. You know, it's, uh, do you it's go, a hotbed. They're both there now, your parents? They're, your well, the, they're all over Chicago now, right? They don't live in the city anymore because you get old and you leave. 
We used to go all, we'd be there all the time. At, the, at Ravinia, there was another couple of places we played there, but... Um, what I would remember, be a second home to you outside of California? California. I got one house, one wife, one kid. Um, one car. One car, yeah. One pair of underwear. No. I yeah. don't wear I've heard the rumors. I don't wear underwear. You wash every day? Yeah, you don't wear underwear? Yeah, Not underwear. with that fucking pipe. Sinatra would throw his... He, w- he would wear underwear once and throw it away. Yeah, they used to say, like, Jordan would wear uh, different shoes every game and throw them Who's away. Jordan? Uh, Michelle. You would say uh, John Michelle Jordan. I didn't know. I don't he was know a painter, a lot about basketball sp- player. I don't know much about sports. I'm not a sport. I had a great. Did you see that? Sh- I had a show called uh, Big Shot on Disney Plus where I played a coach. Mm-hmm. And I was sort of like a, a Bobby Knight guy who just passed away yesterday. God bless. Rest in yeah. peace, Bob Knight. One of my favorite. L- one of my favorite stories about me. Go ahead. Uh, getting over turbulence, Bob Knight. He just did the side of the cross, but you, uh, but you did it wrong. Bob uh, Knight. That's not the. But but he. But, he throw it up to the world. You, what kind of Catholic are you? It goes, it goes, hey, Father's that Holy Ghost. I just Father, did it. I son. went here, 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 and then you go like this. Here, you throw here. it away. I went, I just did this. So you're going like this, like, like you're no, playing I'm a going crossword like this. puzzle. No, I can, my mic is in front of me, Stamos. No, 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 what do you no, no, want no. from me? Uh, Father, Son, Holy I Ghost. I go here, 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 and I throw altar, it up to the sky. Were you an altar boy? Huh? Were you an altar boy? You want to see my butt and you tell me? <laughs> yeah. No, I was not because my mom knew better. Really? She goes, I'm not going to let this kid get trapped he's in that too, whole organization. He's too handsome. We were bad. We got kicked out of the Catholic Church. My mom got divorced. We were scum. Trash. Catholic Church. What a what a what a what, what a, a, great, what a, what a lunacy, great organization. Lunacy. Let's thing. send some money to them too. Yeah, give them more. Have you been to the Vatican? They need a couple more bucks. Yeah, they don't have enough gold. It is remarkable when you go there. They're like anything. Uh, anything. Why would we, you go? We want to happen to the Vatican? Yeah, just to see how beautiful it is. Was it? It's incredible. So your mom, uh, you guys kicked out church. No, oh, we just oh, Bobby Knight. I'm sorry, Bobby. So, Knight. No, so Bobby Knight was why I was flying back. Then they thought you were ADD, huh? Uh, you too. Who, look who's talking. Right. Pot calling the kettle. Except you get more tan than me. I'm the white pot. Cot, pot calling uh, kettle blackie. We'll call him the kettle That was the character I played on uh, General Hospital. I do love that you played a guy named Blackie. And the security guard who was black in that yeah, part of the book was very there. funny. Sammy. If to you go to a black to the... guy and go, excuse me, I'm blackie. <laughs> yeah, right. Jesus. <laughs> and, they, and they introduced me like that. One, the first time, one of the first times I played with the Beach Boys in, in D.C. There was a million people there. It was 4th of July, 1985. Was it at the mall? Yeah. And right? they, said, they said, go out. And, uh, as soon as we got, we were late. They said, uh, you, you, kid, you're on TV. Go out there and tell the, the, the million constipated, pe- drunk people to step back. Take everybody step back or we're going to, um, we're going to shut the show down. And, and the DJ from the local thing said, uh, here he is, a blackie. And I came out, Woo-ah-hoo! race riots. <laughs> and then they saw it was me. I was like, um, wait a minute, we got to go back I'll to- I'll give it to you right now. So the, the, the Bobby Knight story Bobby, was, yes, but yeah. I, I, I tra- you know, we travel for a living. I, turbulence doesn't really scare me, but at one mm-hmm. point I was traveling so much and I was just feeling the anxiety of the movement of like, I wouldn't stand still. I was doing tiny clubs, getting paid no money, jumping all over. And I was going from Indianapolis, I think back to the East Coast. I think, I don't remember where, but I was so scared and they kept pushing back the flight and they were like, oh, the weather was real bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, could, you know when you feel the windows in an airport, like from the wind and I thought- Dad, I don't want to take off in this. Well, that's when I stay in that town. Well, and it was a regional jet too. It was a baby plane, you yeah. know, a little tiny one. And I kept freaking out, freaking out, like, fuck, I don't know if I should get on this plane. And then sure enough, I look over to my right mm. and calm, calm as anything mm. is Bobby Knight reading a newspaper. Wow. Everyone's kind of pacing. And Bobby yeah. Knight's just standing there reading a newspaper. And he's looking up, just waiting for the plane to get on. And we get on the plane mm. and I see him just read a newspaper. And as we're kind of, everyone's a little tense because it's so bad the storm and Bobby Knight didn't even look up from the newspaper, just kept reading the newspaper. And it made me, he's right sitting right, right one row back like that for me. And I thought, God's not going to kill me with Bobby Knight today. This no, isn't how no, I go. No. It's not how he goes. It's no. not how I go, yeah. but you know how he does go a yeah. couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah. God, God waited. So thank you, God. Thank you, God. Look at, I do it again. Do you still, huh? you still have a good, strong belief in God? Do you pray at night? I believe in a thing. I don't even know what it is. I don't like to call it anything because I think as a kid I lost faith in a in a formal religious manner. I get it, man. Yeah, I, so I, I just kind of I was brought up Catholic you know. as well. Yeah, yeah, and I just grew up with such weird the the word uh, God got thrown in my face a lot because oh. of the my relationship with the my mom and the church and the Catholic thing and my my mom's side the Irish right and then my dad is Sicilian. Oh. Uh, who was an is an addict and spent a lot oh, yeah. of my childhood in prison and so oh, no shit yeah and so then from my father's perspective I used to hear the addicts words about God so I got these weird two, right they call uh, the, uh, the higher power uh, higher power, power, power. Yeah, yeah. and then you hear a lot of that stuff and then you try to decide uh, which God are they talking about yeah because they seem like two different gods to me Bobby Lee has a different God too his God is sleep yeah God he's the How God do you of the get rest. that girl on there for so long well she's gone now they, know, they're not together they, anymore yeah, well, how do you get her 
Yeah. Money, you're around Hollywood long yeah, enough, you right. know. Yeah. Um, so Bobby She'll Knight. sit on his belly and he spins her. No, I but got, that got me over. Bobby Knight got me off of, uh, got cool. me off of turbulence. I got a call from my agents a couple of years ago and said, uh, uh, we got an offer for you for, uh, for the new David Kelly show. I'm like, oh my God. Great. I always wanted to work with them. Brilliant writers. I said, what's it about? And they said, uh, basketball. I said, oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh no! I'm I'm so lame at all sports. I don't. You don't get like them. any sports. I don't like them. Wow. I don't. Ever, someone has to lose. I don't like it. I hmm. don't. I never. My dad said you got a way to hate sports. I just don't like them. So I had to sort of play this coach, which I didn't know how to do. And my good friend Roger Lodge, who used to host um, um, Blind Date. You know Roger Lodge. I know Roger Lodge. I mean, I know who Roger Lodge no, is. No, you don't. Yeah. Who? What's he look like? Handsome. Okay, you're right. See, um, <laughs> I I moved up to Hollywood with him when we were young, but. He, he was my sort of my technical advisor, but my, in the show, my character is a, a college uh, uh, coach and he throws a chair and gets kicked out of the Bobby league. Knight. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then I have to work my way back up at an all girls private high school in Laguna. And it was a really Wonderful. well-written show. It was very, very good. And I, um, so I studied him as much as I could. I got all these video of him and I, it was a funny fucking guy, this guy. Bobby he was Knight. hilarious. Well, cause he was like a. He was a wonderful coach. So I, th I think yeah. the thing that extended his, his abilities were that he was such a good coach that his uh, blow-ups and anger and mm. chaos, it all kind of complemented how good of a coach he was. It didn't right. really matter. Right. It's kind of like when you meet someone who's like a really great actor, but they're a fucking lunatic, and you're like, mm. oh, no, I'm a pretty good actor, though. Yeah, right. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like they say, like those scenes about, like you'd hear like a lot of stuff about Joaquin Phoenix, like oh, going yeah, right, ham. Right, right, right. And then someone's like, it's a lot, but But then you see, scene. you know, I've worked with people that, that you know, they don't do any of that stuff, and they're I know. fucking brilliant. Too. Yeah, that's like the you, same thing. On I see more of those people than yeah. I see the other way. Yeah, but, but I also don't get to work that. with. I don't get to work with you know Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, me either. He doesn't really do comedy. Uh, can I ask you about the sauce? No. So, yes, you Good. can. But yeah. let's let's. Um, but Bobby, wait, I was going to tell you about the Bobby. Oh, so my friends uh, hooked someone hooked me up with Jerry West, and I went down t uh, to meet him. I said, Mr. West, thank and I brought Roger. Thank God, because I said, Mr. West, nice to meet you. Thanks for letting us come to the rehearsal today. First of all, it's not called rehearsal, but practice. That's right. You know, was that, and he was uh, with the, um, the, what's the name of the team, the basketball team a couple of years ago. I'm not even kidding. I'm not being, I'm just lame. Jerry West? No, I know, well, I knew him then. Right. I went to meet him. Los to, Angeles Lakers. No, but it was after that, recently, the Clippers. So, right? Right. Was it the Clippers? No. What do you mean? Jerry West and the Clippers? Yeah. He was a, like a, not the coach, but sort of an owner. Yeah, GM. A, yeah, yeah. GM. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And that was during the, they were doing a rehearsal and, and he said, those aren't you know, uh, costumes, those <laughs> uniforms. <laughs> and I have it all on tape. The stage uh, is beautiful. Yeah. That, well, that's what I oh, thought. John, it's and, a basketball and, court, buddy. And then I thought it was like, I thought, I thought they were a college team because I, I was playing a college coach, but I guess they, they're not. The Clippers. Uh, yeah. Some would say they're a college team at some points in their career. Yeah. yeah. When but they, they went to college. But no, they're they, incredible. They're, yeah. These are, these are premier athletes. Were you not impressed so by stupid. the level and their ability? Yes, of course. Have you ever been to a live sporting event? Outside of doing a work for the show, work I, for I sat. I, I, I sat uh, on the floor uh, for the Lakers one time. Somebody <laughs> took me, and uh, and my friend. Dude, I love so a guy that hates sports. Is like they put me on the floor. Well, they when hated the guys me. Aren't... They hated me because I'm not even paying attention. I'm talking to people yeah, in the stands, and enough. at least I said, my friends. At least a kid could. If a kid's sitting there, it's 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 tough to watch too. But at least they could grow up to be a fan. Sure, you're never going to be a fan, and that's just how it is. But so uh, you got tickets once at a Laker game. Yeah, was it Kobe era? No, I don't think recent? so. No, no. Yeah, but maybe it was Kobe. I went with Gary Marshall. It was a long time ago. Gary Marshall. You went with yeah, Gary Marshall. Yeah. And Gary you Shandling was there. With Gary Marshall, Gary Shandling, watched Kobe play. Yeah. And you don't give a fuck. Well, I, there were girls. I looked at the girls. The girls are more important. There you go. Well, so so honestly, that's your only live sporting event you ever been to? Would you go to one with me if I invited you to go to one? Wrestling? I went to a wrestling once. No, let's go to, let's go to, uh, have you never been to a Dodger game? I went, uh, yes, I went with Saget. And okay. we couldn't find the car at the end of the night and I was so pissed <laughs> off and people were like chasing us and I said, I'm a celebrity. What do you find the car? Fucking Bob. You know, he couldn't find the car. You didn't get a driver? No, Bob drove. Bob. Bobby. Bob, what are you, you doing up loved there, Bob. dude? God, you would have loved Bob. You would have really loved him. He was such a good guy, man. He was about as normal of a celebrity as you could get, eh? No. No? But he, no. He wasn't like a guy's guy? He felt like a guy's guy to me. Mm, eh, I don't know about that. He, he, here's, was his deal though. And, this is what, what kills me about him. He didn't know, I mean, when he died, it, it was like Princess Diana or something. Like it, did, the, the outpouring of love was incredible. Didn't you yeah. think? Yeah, it was, it, yeah. And it was never, so tragic too. He didn't, know, he didn't know how loved he was. Because in his mind, if he's not doing eight Netflix specials and you know, selling out arenas, then he's not successful. 
Mm. But it was too high. He, he saw himself too high. And then he was just, it was a disappointment. He worked so hard towards the end there. And um, he, was, he was alive again. His last post is really incredible because he took a picture on stage. I feel like I'm, you know, 20 again or 40 or something. That, yeah. and, he, and, he, and he was on for two hours. And um, it was tough. I, the last dinner that I had with him, it was the four of my wife and his wife, Kelly, and the two of us. And he was everything that I wanted him to be. He was calm and listened and asked questions and didn't talk about himself too much. And, and even like, it used to drive me crazy, like to take a picture with him. It was like, here, my neck fat's too hot. You did 50 pictures to get a thing. And that night it was like, it didn't bother me. And, you know, his famous joke was uh, tonight's specials are cake and cock and we're out of cake. Uh -huh. And, and he, by the way, I asked him to host my father's um, funeral and he opened with that. And then he went into some calamari jokes, uh, circumcision, calamari. Something. Sure. And my mom was like, ah, but it was, um, and so we go into this place and I said, uh, tonight's specials are cake and cock. We're out of cake. He's like, yeah, yeah. And we ended up staying longer than we normally would have. Uh, we weren't in a rush. And um, I said, let's stay and have dessert. Okay, we did. And it was like, if you're with someone that you love and you care about, order the cake because you never know, you know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. I'm at some, he was, uh, they might cry like a fucking, Mac Macron's going like, Don't cry get this Macron. pussy out of here. Macron is such a. Yeah. I love this show because you can talk about just about anything, right? You can talk about anything on the show. And there's no, uh, I stopped drinking about eight years ago. So a little, a little longer. Eight years. Eight, eight, uh, it, June 25th. Eight years. He winked at me again. I want, I, I'm telling you, you like, you do a slow mo of him. See? You see it again. Do it. You see him? I want to know what was your seat, what was the sausage but choice? But can we slow it down? Yeah, they'll slow it down. Because, you know, who's they? What was the sausage choice for you? Oh, everything. I would just drink everything. You didn't, have, got, any, you didn't have a particular? Um, no. But then you talked, I know, you went and got an accident real bad. I got it. I didn't get an accident, but I got a DUI. And I, that's how I opened up the book. I, the first, the first thing I remember uh, was people rolling down. They said, "Pull over, uh, pull over! You're fucked up, oh, Uncle Jesse. Pull over! You're fucked up." Yeah, I was like, "Oh Christ!" I was just driving around and around Beverly Hills like an idiot, and Bob was going crazy trying to find me. And then I wake up. I woke up in a hospital, and I saw this light, and then I saw this shadow, and I thought it was Jesus, but it was Bob. And same, then same, I, same. I checked his zipper to see if it was undone and it was um <laughs> taste this you'll be joke. fine he, that's his kind of joke yeah he would like so it. i stopped i mean i went to rehab and i um and i and i just uh, i haven't drank since um, you feel good now i feel great Better i than really ever. do I, I i was confusing i, I had a great childhood uh, i had great parents I, I grew up in the disneyland like i had no reason to be a fucking you know it's just you know i was getting old and it was um, my dad died and then I got a divorce, which was very hard on me. And then my mom died and I just went, you know, down, I spiraled down and, and I just wasn't the guy that my parents raised. And I was just disrespectful to my childhood and, and the universe. And I, I, all I wanted was a wife and a kid. And now, now you got, got it. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? You got everything you wanted. Yeah. So are you happy? Yes. You are. I really am. Everything then, feels kind of whole now. Yeah. And this book was like, I don't even, I don't. Did, have you, so you, honestly though, have you written or do you want to write a book someday? Oh, no, 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 I can't. That's insane. Th that was how I felt. Yeah. I was like, no fucking way. I don't even, I'm not that interesting. I don't have that great a story. I'm not going to talk about who I fucked. And so who wants the book about I me? would read a book about who you fucked. You read my book, didn't you? Yeah, but I would read a book exclusively oh, just about that. fucking, oh. I don't want to read about your childhood and yeah, all that bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Just give me who you porked. I did rush through the childhood part because, you know, what I read about. Because, but, because of trauma? No, I didn't have any trauma. I just, it's boring when I read other people's books. Like, let's get to the... Right, you know, the Jews. Stuff, yeah. get, get, get to the, the Jews. Jews. Huh? Did you say Jews? Yeah, let's dude. Let's get to the Jews. I, I did. did. It's yeah. a joke. It's Jesus uh, Christ. Uh, so, uh, so, no, we're not done. Okay. What time do you have to do Whitney? Five, but I have to do something in between. Yeah, so. well, then you tell me when you want to go. We've got... Okay, to, we've got. Are you good? We've got time. I'm Great. good. Because we should call Giannis at some point. Could be let's, fun, call, right? I wanna call, let's call Giannis let's right now. What about your mom? Let's FaceTime her. Oh, you want to FaceTime my mom? Yeah. She won't pick up. Would she be better than your dad? Well, let's see. Who should we FaceTime? No, my dad won't pick up. Yeah, my dad, my dad will literally be like, "What are you doing?" Right. I go, "Well, John Stamos." She'll go, w w he won't. "What? Are you, what? Are you, what are you doing? Who cares?" Right. I go, "Why no, is that? How fun is that? What if I brag about you to your dad?" No, he wouldn't. He what wouldn't. What about the sister? He go, "That's nice." Yeah. That's what he say. That's nice. Let's I see called, my mom. Um, we'll call my mom, and then we're gonna call Giannis Papas, our mutual friend who's linked us together, the okay. Greek freak, the real Greek freak. Yeah, he's real. He's he's real Greek though. You want to talk about Greek history? That guy knows everything he about knows Greek about history. about every, all history. Yeah, but he's really good with his own. Do you know uh, Stavros? Halkias? The other no. Greek? Mm -mm. This guy yeah. you should know. 
Who's the most famous person in your phone? You? Yeah. Is no. it the me category? No. Who no. is? Seriously, who do you think's the most famous person in your phone? How about phone? you? Baby. Who's that? I got to tell you something. Yeah. Stam- Stamos came in the studio. Mm-hmm. S- he said the N-word like three times, spit on my producer, and left. I tried to tell him not to be himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said it on Bert's show, and I'm going to say it on this show. Yeah. Why is he not... Playing stadiums or, or big, gigantic uh, Giannis things. can play whatever he wants. You know what it is. He's a family man. He's a yeah. sweet boy. I love and him. And look at him right now. He's curled up with one with his children. Look at that. Look, see? See? Right there. Curled up with the kids, and he's watching what? What are you watching? Full House. Boss Baby. Boss Baby. Dude, you got to uh, watch Boss Baby. I watch Boss Baby. Well, we, we just want to tell you how much we love you, man. You really, you're looking, really, you're looking. Not good. You look. I saw him earlier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You look okay. Yanni, you look okay. I, I want to thank you for, I want to thank, not, not for getting me on this podcast, but you got me on Burt's and that yeah, was fun. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for putting him on the other ones, man. It really is nice of you. I mean, I just got off the Burt cruise, so I'm pretty sure I got AIDS and COVID. Yeah. But From Burt? Yeah. Okay. Burt's passing it around. Well, yeah. I'm glad you got triple boosted on the boat, dude. I love you. That's it? I'll, let me talk to him. Hold on one second. Stamos wants to talk. Hold on. I know. Was, you said this was going to be fun. Hey, man, go back on the boat and tell jokes, you fucking dickhead. You guys are good. Uh, thanks for getting me on here, Giannis. I couldn't do it uh, on my, my own, and I wouldn't have. He wouldn't have done it, no, really. But I, I told him I'm a fan of his, and I really am. I love that. I watched the special again last night. It was so fucking funny. You remember the joke? He's like, like about first, when he jerks off, it's just the pinky, and then two fingers, and five Three fingers, fingers. <laughs> and he fists himself. Oh, that's so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> what? Queef? It's my clean stuff. Oh, the- <laughs> no, my queef stuff is my next special. The queef? big queef. Yeah. What do you call it? The big queef. Well, big, what was the one other this one? Che- cheeseburger? Tiny queef, yeah. Okay. Cheeseburger, yeah. Um, this guy's really funny. Not today, but uh, on his on his work. Yeah, usually I am. Yeah, nine times out of ten. Today's the one. A night, I love you, Giannis. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wrong number. No, you got to hang up on that guy. Yeah, if otherwise talking. he'll keep Fuck talking like he knows you. Like he knows this, yeah. He doesn't know us, really. So we did that. Um, S- tell me this. Yes. One last thing before I kick you out of my studio. Who's your biggest, who was your, who did you meet that, that you got, oh man, that was probably comics, right? Like who? Uh, doing, uh, doing. uh, Your first, when you came to, to, to to Hollywood and. uh, Oh, I was just say doing Curb with Larry was like the pinnacle for my career, kind of. No matter what else I've done. What What did you play on that thing? I just did a, we had a, the Latte Larry episode. I was a, a plumber who built him a toilet that would have a thing that came down that, that did a penis detector. <laughs> and if, depending on your size of your cock, would open the door to a certain level. It was That's a great funny. moment. Yeah. Did you, um, and it was just ad lib? Did they yeah. say, like, talk about this? Yeah, thing? I pitched it during the, during the session, the, the, I guess, audition session, kind uh-huh. of. And oh, and they stole your material. No, we put it in the thing. He said, you know, I said, I walk up to it and it goes, doot, 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 uh, penis detected. And it would open uh-huh. up. And Larry thought the noise was hilarious. And then when JB Smoove came in to hey, set, that guy's funny. And JB's like, "Well, I'm Santino." Uh. And he goes, "Do you want to be in the scene with Santino?" And he said, "He said, come over, yeah, let me do it with him. Let me do it." Wow. So then JB took over. You know, JB fucking takes over. And then so I'd be, you know, I go for you. Is do a black penis detected? And it's woo. The door has to open up much more. And then Larry let us play about it. So that was kind of a pinnacle. For, I gotta watch that. Yeah. Who was it, it for that. you? Who was it for you? What was your like pinnacle of working or partnership the or Beast meeting? Boy thing was. That's that's the top. Of they them. were my, you know, I just idolized the Beach Boys. I love the music, and so to play with them, that was. Wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, God only knows. God, it's so wild. Do that, you like the Beach Boy music? Yeah, I like them. Not like you. Yeah, I no. mean, fuck, I don't play with them. No, that's, you know, that's. Um, I mean, it's that's that's. Did they pay you by the way when you go play shows with them? Yeah, sometimes. They don't, do they? Of course they do. I mean, it depends on the on the on the show. On the event, yeah. Um, but is that ever I a point of contention free. where they were no, like, no, no, I don't give a fuck about money. Anymore. No, I know. But I mean, it is funny that you're like, guys, yeah, I'm, uh, I am yeah, in the band. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would well, like a kickback. <laughs> no, they were, you know, I would certainly do like, I, we went to Australia and that was a big money, game, but I didn't give a shit about that. I wanted to bring my parents, which I got to do a lot. And you know, the, the, that band, the Beach Boys just became family, you know, and they had their families and it was, you know, it's been incredible. What's what, what, this is a very corny question, Go but ahead. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. What, what is the next thing for John Stamon? What do you want? Whitney Cummings, uh, she's pregnant. You know that? she is, dude. You can't have that. No. Well, she, then she want to raise the kid. You want to raise the kid? No. Okay. Well, she texted. She she emailed. She Facetimed me once and said something about the name Jesse, and I'm gonna have a baby. And I thought oh, she was yeah. kidding. No, she's gonna name her baby Jesse. Yeah. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, Jesse is the name of the baby. How do you know? Boy or girl? Whitney and I are very close. Really? It's a good friend of mine. She uh um 
her, she said her boyfriend loved Full House or something, and they were, they're naming him Jesse. Yeah. My 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 original name on there was um, Adam or something. Andrew's not the right word name for you, by the People way. People call me Santino. Nobody says That's Andrew. Better. Yeah, Santino's, the great Santino. Santino, Santino, Santino. Santino. Oh, did you do Brando or anything? Uh, did I like Brando? You, yeah. Did you do him? Did you do him? The, the real spin is that Santino, you know, huh. Mr. Khan, yeah. who passed away. Yeah. I know his son now was a friend of mine. Yeah. He's so oh, strange. Yeah. He's to great. like have played. There you go. It's so weird, like his father, because my name is very rare. Santino is almost never a last name. Santino is Sunny. It's a first name typically uh-huh. in, in Italy. Uh huh. Oh, so that's, it means Sunny. The Sunny is the nickname for Santino. Do you go to Italy? Yeah, every been? year. Yeah. 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 How long have you been with your wife? Seven. Mm-hmm. What's she like? Is she cool? Whew. Put Tough. Up with you, huh? She's pretty hard. Yeah. She's. Uh, Did you meet her out six, here? Six six three twenty five. Yeah, met her down there. Met Good her girl, at, huh? at at the uh, Rams training camp. She was. Training to be a linebacker. Really? Big lady. Yeah. How is that going to play when you get home tonight? She'll be fine. She don't care. Yeah, Do you make jokes about her in your act and stuff? Not, not really, no. What about I your mean, dad? Did he watch your special yeah, and go, hey, come on. No, no, no. Yeah, they know what's coming. Yeah. yeah they, they do? Yeah, yeah. They like it. Actually, they love my dad. When I talk about my dad, and he thinks it's like my favorite. Like, I do this joke now about him not being able to connect the Bluetooth, the Sonos to the Bluetooth. Yeah. And how, I, I mean, I really do fuck with them. I like to fuck with them because they fucked with us when we were kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, all the time. Uh, and I say, you know, my, to my dad, he would say like, how do I fix the fucking Bluetooth speaker? Mm-hmm. Like he would get so mad and I lie and I go, Oh, I, I'll bring up the manual and I'll just mm-hmm. pull up my phone, but I'll be on Instagram or something. <laughs> and then I'll go, this says you have to unplug everything inside of the house <laughs> and he'll do it. He'll go around and unplug. Shit. So I just like to fuck with him, but I put stuff in the, in the, in the show because he knows he's very like, uh, my parents are so not in this world. Right. That it's such a wealth of genuine, honest, real material. Right, right, because right. they this this world means nothing to them. They don't like. That's great though, right? Yeah, no, it's I love That's it. It's it's they're totally disconnected from it. They're happy about it. Mm-hmm. Do they talk? Are they friends at all or no? Uh, no, 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 no. My biological, no, no, no. They don't talk. No, they don't. Do you have a stepfather? Stepdad. stepmother? That's what I was referring to. Yeah, my stepdad ends up in my show a lot. Oh, what about yeah. your real dad? He ends up on the show sometimes too. Well, who were you talking about? And went to the hospital with COVID. That's my real dad. Okay. Yeah, I interchange them without uh, don't you don't delineating. Put, well, it'd be too hard to explain. Yeah, <laughs> like well, this yeah. part's my real dad. When I say dad again, it's gonna be my. Well, you could put subtitles. Yeah, I could do that, but we do that for Spanish and for Italian and stuff like that. Already. Did you? I see you talk about it a little bit, but I mean, and and I think you, I think you mocked in that thing. You're saying people say, "Oh, could comedy's changed so much," but you really are pretty brave and you don't change for anything with the whole you know with being i don't know, care uh, it's because it's all fake i'll tell you why it's all it's uh, you you would feel the same way about making some sort of art for television or film mm-hmm. it's fake it's fantasy right. it's all fake right i just think that like my favorite comedians or performers or artists always stayed a little grounded in the idea that it's like you know this isn't real this is all for fun this is right, for your right. entertainment but they've taken people out for I mean, I guess I, not for their not act, really. right? To not when you think about it. Not well, you really. had a great joke about Chappelle and and the and the uh, trans thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coming out, could you imagine if that was a, if it was a long game for him? Yeah, it long actually game came out as trans. <laughs> no, I just think it's like it, w- Ch- Chappelle you, showed up for Bob's stuff. He would, you know, and he was true comedy fan, and he was great. He was so, and I said to him, I said, you know, you the last couple of years, you know, you're the goat. And, oh, that he did funny goat jokes. Oh, the G O T trans of all great. fans. He loves it when I talk about it. I do. Um, and but uh, you're not as bad as Bert. My fr- I went with my friend Greg Garcia to Bert. And I said, because I, I like to learn about you know you guys before I go in. Yeah, he said he loves to talk about himself. He Bert, loves to be famous. Bert does, and so I just yeah. did that, and it was great. And you're <laughs> yeah. you're kind of like that too. No, I'm uh, not. Yes, it's okay. You though. keep putting it on me. That's I keep what trying I do. to ask you questions. That's Stamos. what I do because I'm fascinated by you. You put it on me. You I'm, know what it is because you don't like answering too many questions about. No, you. I don't mind at all. I swear, but I but I'm interested in people, and, and I, if I yeah. ever did another podcast or something, I would be an interview. I like to interview people. I won't. Because you should do. it's too much. Does that shirt have buttons? If I hit, uh, 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 if I throw a stick out the window right now, I hit six people with a podcast, more successful than this one. No, no chance. Where no chance. No, I know. This is a big, this, this is, is a this good is, one. Uh, this is the bigs. I know. Yeah. Got. But wait, we were talking about uh, comedy God, and crossing the line and being canceled. Well, no, you were just saying, I, I just don't believe in that. I think some of the best artists uh, right. I've ever yes. loved, you, you can get mad at what they say for like a heartbeat, then it goes away. Do you, what's the, but I mean, is there a line for you? That's a good question. Like, would you make fun of, uh, I'll you don't really of, make fun of people that much, I, do you? I don't make fun of people. I make fun of, like, myself with the situations that I know people that get into. I mean, but, like, uh-huh. there is no line. I don't, I, if you have a good 9-11 joke, you got a good 9-11 joke. Well, how soon would you wait? I would have done, I, I done, honestly, yeah. I would have done it in October. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, September, October, right. Yeah. You know, uh, calendar, Gilbert, calendar. remember Gilbert uh, did that on, um, on one of the roasts? Yeah. Did you watch the roast? Have yes, you I watched one? all of them. Have you no, never did any of them. Never was asked. Comedy Central was not a fan. 
Really? Well, That's right, Comedy Central. I did a half hour with you. You got two albums out of me. Yeah. You didn't get me on the. No, I'm not a roast comic. I don't. That's not my forte at do all. Do you? Do you have a deal with Netflix? Are you going to do another special? I might one? do another one. Yeah. Should I don't get know. Ted when. on the line. He's a Greek. You know. Mm. No. Okay. Um, Are you good friends with him? I'm. Yeah. You guys go do do. You know how do you know how Jewish people have dinners like seder together? Yeah, do you yeah. guys do Greek dinner yeah, together? Yeah. You do. Yeah. What is that called for you guys? Greek dinner. Dinner. Uh, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a good guy. Ted Sarandos? Yeah. The guy that runs Netflix? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, I don't know him. I'm sure he's a great guy. I know, I know nothing about him. Now he's a chance to kiss his ass. Hey, Ted, how you doing, man? <laughs> I know you're a big fan of the show. Yeah. <laughs> he's a big fan of comedy, obviously. He is. He's, no, he's he is. They, they, and they, have, they run a good little ship of... of, of Fools. Of fools of of selecting people that are moving on to next yeah. stages of their career. Yeah, like right. our friend Taylor Thomason just got a, a late night show. She's taking over for James Corden. Oh, really? Oh, good yeah. for her. Yeah, we're really happy for that because it's like a good thing to see comics slide back You're into like the that. public world. You're well, like here's that. why. Go ahead. For a long time, oh, did she have pro- Did she have issues? I, I don't know her story. No, no, no. I'm saying it slide into that world of like the commercialization of comics again. Right. We did this a long time ago, and then they took it away a little bit. They were like, mm, we're not sick of mm-hmm. stand up comedians being commercialized. In- but, right, you know, with Nate Bargatze hosting Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live is yeah. a huge step for comedy yes, stand-ups. Yes, yes, yes. That's great. Well, people need it right now. This world is, you know, Discord is at all-time high and decency at an all-time low. I say all the time. So we have you guys to to watch. And, and now with a the strike, there's you know, we're, just, we're not working. There's no new shows, but you guys are out there killing it and making the world a better place. We're trying. I mean it. One, we're trying our best. It's, it, and is business better? Is it good right now for you guys? I think it's amazing because people want to go see live shit. Yeah. They couldn't see it for COVID. And now they want to see live shit because there's so much television. I think they're inundated with new, with TV slop. Yeah. What channels, what things. There's too much. Yeah. I'm not saying the shows are bad. I'm saying it's so much going on. I have no idea what to watch. So for a live show, you can just go disappear for a couple hours. I love it. I love seeing comics. I love it. Are you going to tour this book and do live shows? I did it already. I did everything. But I mean, are you going to do live shows with the book? I did. Last, what do you mean? Like book signings and stuff? No, no, no. Like, would you ever do a live show reading of the book? Oh, 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 oh. Well, you do, um, you do a lot of these, uh, I'm doing something at the, at the the Kia Theater, I think, next week. Um, but you mean like, like. Like, I think Tyson read his book live in front of people and he kind of like personalized it then they made the tv show about it where he would like who's what is that michelle tyson oh yeah michelle tyson he he was a french boxer is he fucking with me no man what are you talking about tyson mike tyson that uh he wrote a story of his life and he kind of performed it live a little bit on stage rob lowe did that jeff uh, jeff ross is going out doing that do you know jeff yeah what he's doing his oh for his for his uh he doesn't have a book, but I thought no, no, he's, he's got doing a like thing a, about his dad, right? About to take the cookies or whatever yeah, the fuck it was yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, why can't like I that. think of that name? It's take the uh, take the cannoli, uh, leave the gun. No, that's from the. Is that your favorite movie? The Godfather? Yeah, not even close. What's your favorite movie? My favorite mob movie. What's your favorite? Casino. Movie? Rickles. Casino. It's not even close. You Casino is the funny. Yeah. What do you mean? Do I ever? Billy. Yeah. I mean, my favorite scene. We can't even say. We'll have to blank it. Say you know? it. What is when, it? Oh. When he calls him and he goes, "You know that guy, Ace? You know that guy was with me." He goes, no, but you know what he did? He called me a mm. He told me to go fuck myself. Mm-hmm. He disrespected Billy. He goes, what? <laughs> you call my friend a f- You told him to go <laughs> fuck himself? He's beating him with the fucking with phone. The phone. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. he goes, he's already very sorry, Ace. As you can tell, he's already very sorry. I mean, that's one of the funniest. Pesci? Scenes. I laugh. Yeah, I laugh every time I see that fucking scene. Because it's like, you see this, fun- finally you see this relationship with these two gr- characters who are balancing their power dynamic. Right. You know, I know I'm reading into it, but it's beautiful it's that, great. like, Ace, Sam Rothstein is becoming who he really always wanted to be, was the mm. king, mm. right? And his friends, his peers, are are going down and down. And so, as you see this weird shift of the scales, mm. they send in their yahoos, which normally wouldn't have bothered anybody. But when he called him that, it disrespected him. He mm. disrespected his staff, Don, and it was like, you watch the power shift over the phone to this weird thing. And he's like, sorry about that. But you could tell that is one of the beginnings of the, oh, wow, that's it. Sam will ascend. Mm -hmm. You will go down. You'll end up resenting him. And then it all explodes. That's great. It's the beginning of the end. I love it. It's it's That scene is so funny to me. It's so good. I was having dinner with Don and Barbara, his wife, in Vegas after a show once. And she said, uh, well, you said we can't say that. She said, Don, you have to stop saying the word you said. What? The word you said. What? The F word. Fuck? You can no, say that on the show. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm I saying? understand. Yeah. And uh and and he said, I, I didn't say it. John, did I say it? I said, Yeah, about seven times. Shut up. 
And that's how <laughs> dinners would be. I'd sit in the middle of the two of them, and we'd fight, and they'd argue. And she would say, you know, he had diabetes or something. Don't eat that cookie, Don. I, I didn't order. No, he ordered cookies. So who ordered the cookie? John, I didn't order the cookie. Shut up. And back and forth, I'd stick him with the bill, and I'd run. But um, he, it was that, a, a discussion about that, you know? Yeah. And I said, you said it about seven times. And he would add, he wouldn't just say just the word. And yeah. then he was saying, you know, it's a funny word. This was a, long, a while ago. Still is a funny word. That's what he would say. Yeah. And, but he would add like F, uh, Mau Mau Pilot. What am I, an F Mau Mau Pilot or F yeah, yeah. Werewolf or something? <laughs> like, well, we were like, why do you put Mau Mau Pilot? Fighter, Mau, uh, what am I, an F Fighter, uh, Mau Mau Pilot or something? He was, God, he was so fucking good. But one, one year for my birthday, he said, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want to listen. He had one album that he did called um, uh, Hello Dummy. And I said, I want to listen to it. I'm going to ask, stop it. And I'm going to ask questions. No. I said, you, that's what I want for my birthday. No, come on, Don. All right. So we listen, we were listening and I'd stop and I'd say, how did you do that? I don't know. I'm just being reckless. I'm just stop. Shut. Get, let it roll. I'm funny. You know, I got to show him himself on YouTube on, on all the old, uh, you know, tonight show stuff. Yeah. Great. Got you it. stopped and started the whole album with him. Yeah. Did you get through all of it? Yeah. Cause he told me to stop stopping. <laughs> he was just said, I'm doing reckless. He never had writers. He didn't like people writing for him. He didn't like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> well, the new age guys, we don't, none of us have writers, which yeah. is kind of funny. There was a weird leak of the old guys that we started to find out they had writers. Yeah, like Bob Hope and Jerry It turned Lewis us all off. Guys, I couldn't yeah. believe, well, if you're on a TV show, it's okay to have like Kimmel and those guys. Yeah, you're not going to write a monologue every day. Right, right, right. But I but I never understood when guys stood acts that other people wrote. It never really landed with us. I yeah, he like, couldn't, he didn't like it and he didn't, he, uh, talked about Jerry Lewis on, on Letterman once somehow, but, but Jerry had written some jokes he'd want to do them. He said, that guy, he said something like, uh, walk on, walk, you know, he's doing walk on. And they let him, now Dawn. It's same thing with Bob, that nanosecond. You think like, do I bail or do I go forward? He goes, you know, when those, when he sings that song, those kids get worse. Right. <laughs> let him say, oh God. <laughs> but um, uh, it was that talk. And, you know, it's so fucking like, towards the end there, you know, he would get some flack and he did a joke about uh, Obama. And, you yeah, know, he got, he, 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 was well, he didn't get it. Here's the deal. Right. You lose a little bit of touch oh, or like presence of what's going on. Right. And like I said before, I don't believe that you should censor anything that's going on in your mm -hmm. brain. Mm -hmm. But if it comes from a place of, of honest comedy and no malice behind it, well, then it's harmless. It's just, it's, just, it's just floating thoughts. Right. And he, they come he, and they go. It's sort of like, but, but if you thought that was, like you're a racist yourself if you're thinking that. Like it, he, was, he was sort of like um, Archie Bunker where he would you know, well, show how fucking stupid it is and make fun of it and if you know and 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 show how terrible it was he he didn't make fun of you know he his comedy was hard to i, I don't know if people would get it today obviously and he, i don't think he knew how to do it i think it they himself. would i just think that people know people the, the hard thing to communicate sometimes in a world that's so serious is that a lot of most entertainers are being entertaining they're being characters they're playing mm -hmm. something right, for right, you right, that's right, the whole right. point right so when you get lost in the idea of this life that you think is real mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh that's on you so who right. we are to you in the world there is who you choose to make us be. Who right. we really are is someone that you'll only get to know if you meet me. Same as you. I don't know who these people are that are listening. Mm -hmm. I'd only get to really know the real you if I met you. Not by a YouTube comment or right. by what somebody said you are or who you are or what you do. Right. The only real version you're going to get of someone is if you sit and speak to them. I know John Stamos now. Now you do? Yeah, I know a piece of you for sure. I can sure. feel you by the way you sit, your mannerisms, the yes. way you walked in. Right. Yeah. The little kiss you gave me on my nose. I mean, it's strange, but was lovely, lovely. Tell the truth. It was on my mouth. Yeah. I wish you'd kiss me on the mouth. Yeah. People got to go buy John Stamos's book. You can get it audiobook, by the way. And I do, I, I just listened to it a little bit on the way over here because- Terrible. It's not fun. No. It's not good. Just read it yourself. I did Sammy Davis Jr. I do a lot of impressions. Yeah, very strange. You did some really you bad just, ones. You didn't listen to, did you listen to it? Yeah, you did like a Trump halfway through. No, I didn't. Yeah, you're like, Trump. I grew up in Orange County. It was, no, I was like, this no, is no, not no, Stamos. That's a good Trump. It's not bad. Uh, give me some more. Uh, you, you were, you, you really walked the line. Was in the it a full there. house? How full was the house? Some say. Some say it was full. Some say it was full. Some say it was not full. Full of shit is what I would say. Liberal agenda, shit, yeah. trash. Uh -huh. San Francisco trash. Gay. Poop on their doorsteps filled with gays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, he came to a play I was doing, uh, uh, cabaret in New York. Really? And he wrote, I, I. How long ago was this? 15 years ago, maybe. Right. Him and, and he wrote me a, no, a letter after I got the note and said, me and Melania thought you were great. It was a very nice sure. letter. And he signed it. Every time I saw him after that, Howard, you know, he was at Howard's wedding. They used to kind of, uh, did you love my note? Wasn't my note the best? Just like he does this stuff. And no one else sent you notes, right? I said, uh, yeah, no. People sent me notes. Tom, uh, uh, what was his name? Donald. Donald, Donald yeah. 
I said, no, I got a lot of notes. I got a lot of telegrams. No, but mine was the best. Was it? It's okay. It wasn't super. What did you do with the Trump note? I have it. Oh, you're going to put it in the book. Is it framed? No. Got to frame that, dude. I know. I had it up. I had, yeah, I'll frame it when I get home. Beyond all of the chaotic hatred of the, 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 the chaos that Trump caused, the divide of the culture, that's a frameable note. You're right. And throughout the chaos, I'm not, I, I was never into politics. I, we didn't, I, my, I didn't grow up. Yeah, you don't vote. That. I vote. I, uh. Well, you voted? Have you voted every time? Do you vote from the primaries? You vote? Yes. You vote every time? The last. Never missed a vote? The last six years, I have not missed a vote. I haven't voted since Bush won. I just did something with Bush. So, but the, 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 uh, my point was that I, when he came around and started kicking up all this dust, I go, what's going on over there? And I really dug in d- deep into the poli- in the political world and it's you, fucking scary. It's bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not, we're, 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 in, you know. I was just in D.C. hosting the Points of Light, which was a Bush thing. Oh, yeah. I said, no political jokes. I said, okay. What else am I going to do? Yeah, Yeah, I guess I'll return this barrel of oil that I had right behind me. Yeah, yeah. Burn. Bush. Bush. Uh, I want to let you go because I want you out of my studio. Right. Um, No, but you do have to go do another one. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Can I have your phone number? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll give it to you right now. You're on the air. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, my mom just called. Let's do it again. Let's. let's, Hey, mom. Let me talk to her. What's her name? Ma, you want to say hi to John Stamos? Yeah. <laughs> no, you oh, don't. She's mad. She's going to be bummed. Are you all right? You want me to send it? All right, there you go. Maureen. Oh, hi, Maureen. Oh, you look young. <laughs> Your son looks beat up. You look. No, like wait a, a minute. You look like his sister. No, I look good. Aren't you proud of him? Yeah. He's a good man. I was a, a big fan of. Well, I became a fan of his about a year when that special yeah. came out. I was like, this guy's. First, he came out and said he's too good looking to be funny. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he was so. It's quiet, man. Yeah. He was so sorry. funny. And um, I just enjoyed being on his podcast here. He's a really sweet man. What are you, mom? <laughs> Did you, um, are you in Chicago? Yeah. I played at Ravinia all the time with the Beach Boys. At the Riv with the Beach Boys. Would you like? Yes. Yeah. I think we're playing. I think we're doing it pretty, um, right after the, yes, I'm, I'm coming up there. And I'm, would you come to the show if I got your tickets? Yeah. Come backstage <laughs> and say hi. Yeah. Okay. I'd love it. You're, Hey, mom, I'm you're talking. still married to dad. You know what I mean? I'm talking to her. Just hitting on what my mom. What are you saying? Sorry. I'm not hitting on her, but she John does. John Stamos look, hitting on my mom live very, on my show. But she's pretty. She's yeah. very pretty. I don't know. That's why I look like this. You should have turned look at out me. better. Your, the, your real dad must. <laughs> <laughs> Did, um, okay. I promise I'm going to, I'm going to make, where are you at now? Are you at... downtown at work? Oh, you are. Where do you work? <laughs> He doesn't know Chicago. Yeah, Ma. I think so. I know that. Yeah. Is it by uh, Gibson's? No. Oh, okay. Who's? Uh, do you have any other workers around there? Yeah, Mom. Show him off to the crew. Yes. No, she doesn't want to go out in the office. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, it's nice to meet you. Is it? What's? It's Miss, Miss Maureen. Maureen. What's her last name? Vaughn. Yeah. Yeah. Show him off. Show him off. She wants to go show you off now. Yeah. Sure. What's her? What do I call him? Miss what? Vaughn. Oh, I like that. Vaughn. Theo Vaughn, too? Is that the separate? Yeah, Theo, that Theo is my dad. <laughs> no, that's V O N. They're V A U G H. John Stamos. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi. Yes, I turned 40. I lost a bet, too. I lost a bet. Now I'm on his this guy's show. I just turned 40. John's much older than me. You can tell. I'm 60. I just turned 60. Okay, good. My mom, this will be all day. You did this. This was a mistake. Yeah, you did this. Why would you? Hi, t- Caroline. <laughs> How are you? My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Oh, I have a book that just came out last week, and it's number four on the New York Times bestseller list, and I'm working promoting it. Your son said he read it, but I don't think that happened. I did, Mom. Can't. I read it, Ma. You know I read the book. He's a very smart guy, and I really enjoyed my time with him. I'm, I'm not, no more jokes. I'm no serious. more. Thank you. I really like him. Did you, he's got a story about uh, his teacher uh, said he was too hyper and an ADD, and you went in there and said, fuck you, and I'm defending my, you didn't say fuck you, but you defended him. Mrs. And he said, Mrs. Ha- what was it, Mom? Mrs. Rose or Rhodes? Rhodes. Yeah. 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 She, so she, she looked at me very seriously, and uh, is your son on medication? That's right, yeah. And I I needed to take her out. 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's beautiful. He told that story and I thought he was lying, but No, it's true. That's so when was the first time? Well, he told me he said it was a really important moment because it was the first time that you that he realized that you were standing proud up for him me. and standing up for him and everything. Yeah. And then how about when he started to become successful? Were you just so proud and his special is so great and yeah. That could be it. That's I mean, Gracious. Tell tell John Stamos what I got you for Christmas last year. What'd you get him for? She made a face with her eyes. Tell down. John Stamos what I got you for Christmas last year. What did he get you for Christmas? It better be a car. Butter wow. car. I got bought a brand wow. new car. She, my mom's never had a brand new car her whole life, and I bought her a brand new car. That's beautiful. zero miles, right, Ma? Zero miles. Um. My mom, I was very close with my mother. She passed away. I talk about it a lot. And my mom wrote me these really beautiful notes um, and my sisters as well. And when I was trying to figure out how to write this book, I, I gathered those up and my sisters sent me copies. And I, and I sort of laid them out. Um, did you write any notes to, to the <laughs> no, little guy over here? Never. <laughs> I used to write her That's notes. okay. Yeah. That's great too. Yeah. It's never too late. You should write them. Well, there was, you know, <laughs> Yeah, being a bad Tell me kid. what what are some of the things he he, he misbehaved about? Well, I'm I'm going to pick up some of the letters and send them. I would say I'm would sorry you? every time I screwed up. I did. Well, well like what was his? I big... got caught doing drugs or getting kicked out of school or you know all the fun stuff, right, Ma? You know, yeah, <laughs> Painting, basically. Yeah, I could yeah. see, I could see that his face is the same color as. as <laughs> um, but he's a good boy, and and uh, and you're proud of him. That's good. I find you so much more interesting than your son. I was like, please call your mom or anybody that I could talk to besides him. Mom, I'll call you later. I'm so sorry about all this. This is the book, sign, Mom. Someone just gave me this. I'm gonna, will you send this to your mom? Yes, I will. I'll, I'll sign this for you if you want. It's called, If You Would Have Told Me. If, if You Would Have you told, me, told Me. One day I'd we'll be get on, you the, the book. Uh, on the Santino show. Yeah. All right. Bless you. Yes, I, I heard you guys were brought up Catholic, and then the you know. You and we had we had to leave. <laughs> my mom taught uh, CCD. Catechism. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We didn't. We weren't that active because my parent, my my mom was ba a bad Catholic, so we didn't really. Terrible. You're not a bad Catholic to me. Yeah, yeah. You're all grown up. She's now. very pretty. I'm not. Kidding. She is. I'm not kidding. That's why I'm so hot. Well, that's why know. I'm so hot, John. Oh, okay. Bye bye. So, Mom, I love you. I'll call I, you later. I love you too, Maureen. We'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. She gave me a, she blew a kiss. I know she did. That I, and I'm going to have a talk to her. Honestly, a, I'm going to have to talk to her about that. That was a I'm not okay with thing. That. I'm not okay with that. I thought that was very sweet. Um, wasn't it? You going to sign this book for me to send to my mom? Yeah. All right, listen. But wasn't that a nice moment? It was really nice. I really do Don't appreciate it. it. I want to tell you that. I really appreciate it. No, so we won't I mean, it literally, it was way more interesting than what, you know. By far. By far. Um. I want to thank John Stamos uh, oh, for you? for being there for me when I needed him most. When today? Yeah, I need you today. I will be I will be there with you. If okay. I'm available. Um, you can go buy his book anywhere books are sold. Uh, if you would have told me, is a phrase that, as he says in his book, many people would say uh, in their real life. If you Did would you? have told me X Y Z, you have one. Um, if you would have told me, I'd be sitting here doing a podcast with uh, John Stamos. Yeah, uh, 15 years ago when I first moved to Los Angeles, yeah. I'd say that's a crock of shit. Yeah. What's a podcast? That's what you, I would have said. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. What is a podcast? What about Macron? Macron, if you would have told me that uh, I would literally make a guy's life yeah. uh, a loser from Minnesota and like give him a life in the industry, um, I would say, sounds right. Sounds like me. I have a big heart. What's, how do you spell your mom's name? M-A-U-R-E-E-N. Maureen. The loveliest. And while you do this, I want you to think about something. Yeah? I can't think and write. Mm, interesting. Time. I'm not a good speaker. We end the show the same way. When we end it, I want you to do this. This is important to me. I never got it. It's one I word or that. one phrase. I never, that's stupid. No, no, no I want dumb. it. It's amazing. You You're and, so and smart. And I want you to look is at that camera. Yeah. Okay, come over here and bring your mom she's over hot, here. She's hot, he just said. On, she's hot? Or she's, oh, she's high. Hi. John Stamos wants to say hi. Like who? She's driving. Say, oh, hi. She's beautiful, too. Hi, 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 Macron's mom. How are you? She just got in an accident. Yeah, you yeah. guys should start a, a band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Macron's mom. Nice to talk to you. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> She's pretty too. Yeah, his moms are hot. Yeah, but his mom is like twenty five. He's a kid. Yeah, Maureen, you uh, you are 
what did you say? A, a little ray of sunshine? Uh, you are uh, lovely. Lovely. You are lovely. You I'm raised. lucky to have met your son. I'm lucky to... I'm lucky to be such good friends with your son. That's what I like. With love and peace. And it's J-O-H-S. No, no, please, no. <laughs> um, look, you, I know you were thinking a, about it, and I know, I know you think it's stupid, but well, honestly... Listen, this was a great interview. We, we talked about a lot of things. Uh, in my opinion, I listened to a lot of uh, podcasts, and this, is, this was one of them. And this was funny. This is a good one. So we should not crap it up. I mean, you asked great questions. We talked about really interesting things. This one word bit, I have no, I, what is it? <laughs> because it sounds dumb. I mean, <laughs> you don't need gimmicks. No, it's not a gimmick. It's got to be a it's gimmick. It's a sweet, sweet moment to end the show. Here's how we end the show. You any look into that camera, you say one word or one phrase uh -huh. that's meaningful to you in any way, shape, or form. Could be funny. With you, it probably won't be. Mm -hmm. It could be anything under the sun that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, then? To end the episode. It's, it's a way to close it off kind of beautifully. You know, an old... You know, remember the old Looney Tunes? Da, 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 that's all, folks. This is my that's all, folks. I gotta go. I mean, I really do have to pee. So right there, look at that camera. One word or what, one what phrase. What do other people do it? Do it. Well, they what usually they use their say? brain or their heart. Yeah, but but this is it's this is this is a gimmick, uh, Santino. This is like <laughs> say you that in the camera. This is a oh, okay. Good. There you go. This is a gimmick. This 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 last bit on Santino's show. I could think of something better, but I I refuse. No, no, because, that's good. Really, that's good. Do you, did everybody do this? Yes, I everyone, literally everyone's done it. You know, so we've, had, we've had so many good ones. What good guests have you had on here? Uh, Tony Hawk. Skateboard? Yeah, like the greatest skateboarder Is of all skateboard? time. Is this skateboard? Yeah. I took a guess. Wait, really? You don't know Tony Hawk? The greatest skateboarder that, like. Oh, but skateboarding, what, I mean, I oh can't do it. I'm God. sure he's a fantastic athlete. Tony Hawk! <laughs> yeah. Who Is have we had on the show famous? that John Stamos would know? That's, uh, who have we? Dana Carvey? Oh, yeah. Did he do voices? Sure did. He's funny. He's incredible. I kind of yeah, I love uh, who else have we had on the show? That Keenan Thompson, who just came on from Saturday Night Live, one of to... one of the funniest guys who alive. Was it? I believe it was a was it a Steven female? Soderbergh? Do you know who that is? Yeah, the director. Did, why did how did you get him? By the way, look at me. Are you on? Did you do something with him? I had John Cena on this show. Yeah, but 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 oh, because you did a movie. With we did a movie together. Like yeah, yeah. You, I bet you're a really good actor. I'm an okay actor. I'm not. I'm not. I'm okay. I'm good enough. We're gonna cut this down to a tight twenty minutes. Right? I would this hope so. Yeah, at this point, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thanks for I, having me. I, thank you. And I'm going to say a last word for John Stamos. Okay? okay? Now it's cut to me for the first time in the history of the show. Really? Go buy this book. Uh, it's actually very, very good about a guy who you think you may know, but you kind of don't. And this may open up a few doors into the world of Stamos uh -huh. that makes you fall in love with him even more than you already have. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like this.